The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, November 16th, 2021. And this sports show on YouTube begins right now. Yeah. Can't thank you enough for joining us. I know that there are some days where you watch along and think to yourself, why would I ever spend any of my energy or time with this group of stooges. And that might come at a more frequent rate whenever something like last night happens. There is a completely reasonable expectation for the Rams to actually play football last night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay? The Rams. The team that told St. Louis, allegedly, potentially, we got a deal in place to get a new stadium. The taxpayers are going to pay for it. But, hey, St. Louis, we're fucking out of time. We're going to Los Angeles. And Stan Kroenke, who married the Walmart folks Mm -hmm. and probably had his own money, that was all arranged, right? Has to I mean, all yeah. those big money things. I don't think they're yeah. letting anyone marry a, a, a Walmart daughter. I don't think so. Uh-huh. Yeah, because if anybody was to get into a relationship with a mega bazillion bazillion dollar, you'd probably do exactly what wrong. Give me the Avalanche. Give me the Nuggets. <laughs> yeah. Give me the Tottenham. Give me the Rams. You would do all those things. And what that's what Cronky. A lot of money, business decisions. He is a force, I believe, in all professional leagues at this point. I think he has a. He has a baseball team. He has a hockey team. Yeah, MLS. He has an MLS team. He has an NFL team, and he has a a English league. Yeah, Yeah. Premier League League team. Uh So this guy is dabbling in literally every single league. I'm I'm go to Los Angeles, and when he gets to LA, there's another team that's going to be there, the Chargers, and they decide they have to build a new stadium because the Chargers are playing in an MLS stadium, and the Rams are playing at USC stadium. So there was a big thing that had to had to happen. Stan Kroenke goes, "Cool, let me get some designs for this stadium." They say, uh, here you go, in Los Angeles, uh, some of the most expensive real estate on earth. The amount of, you know, just price gouging that happens over there and taxes and everything that happens in California, it's going to cost $2 billion. Then they get into building SoFi Stadium, and that thing ends up being like six, seven, eight billion. Kroenke says, out of my ass, go ahead and take it. I don't care. Make the place sweet, and I'm going to invest all my money. Not just in Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays at SoFi Stadium that can't handle a little storm, but it is beautifully built. Not only is that money, but our team is going to win. We are going to win over Los Angeles. We are here in the past. We're going to win it over again as the Chargers try to get in there. And we have the Super Bowl in the stadium that I built. Stan Kroenke said, fuck the future. Les Snead said, fuck them picks. And Sean McVay said, fuck, I can get down with that because I had an offer to do Monday Night Football. Just a year ago, they were going to pay me like $15, $20 million to do Monday Night Football. I said, no, I want to coach. So they're going all in. All in. Give us Matty Stafford. Do this. Do that. Pay this. Pay that. How you doing? Keep it moving. New stadium. New team. Trade for Vaughn Miller. Oh, we're getting Odell Beckham Jr. We're going to actually throw him the ball in the first play so he knows, hey, we love you. Matthew Stafford might force a punt in his direction, but we're going to go all in and we're going to win. And we're traveling to Santa Clara, California. And we're playing against a wounded animal, a team that hasn't won at home in over eight games. They're on a four-game losing streak. They stink. The Rams are on the rise. The Niners on the decline. This seemed like an alley-oop. But it was was suspicious. A little bit. Everybody on earth was hammering the Rams. Yep. Everybody on earth was loving Matty Stafford and Sean McVay and Vaughn Miller and what? Aaron Donald what? and Jalen Ramsey what? and Cooper Cobb what? and Matthew Stafford what? and Johnny Hecker's completing passes. What? But the line didn't move at all. Uh-uh. Just stayed put three and a half. This thing ain't budging. It was almost like the sports book was telling us, hey, 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 
You all are out of control. There's going to be no chemistry between Matthew Stafford and Odell Beckham Jr., and we saw that very quickly. Uh -huh. Vaughn Miller might not even have any chemistry with the D-liner as well. That's going to be a problem. He's not going to do a damn thing. In the 49ers, Shanahan, there's been conversations about Matt Nagy potentially being a better coach <laughs> yeah. than him. He drew up every single college football misdirection run right down the fucking throats of the Rams defense that was just a year ago being heralded as one of the greatest defenses uh -huh. In football, I should have known this. I should have expected this. But I am ice cold when it comes to gambling. And you don't realize that Shanahan is going to drop these plays where Juice is going to be chipping on Vaughn Miller. And then George Kittle is going to pick Vaughn Miller up <laughs> and dump him on his ass, which George Kittle is known for doing. George Kittle scores the touchdown. And immediately upon happening, of course George Kittle scores the touchdown. Yeah. yeah. He's so they, good. They did whatever the hell they wanted to the Rams. Mm -hmm. And on the offensive side, Matthew Stafford did not look good at all. There's a conversation going around the internet now. Actually, I know a Rams fan was saying, oh, he look a little bit like Matthew Goff Erd. Whoa! Whoa. Yeah, we've seen this before, is what the Rams fan was basically saying. Yeah. We've oh. seen this before. He's old. Ma There's memes now coming out oh, where yeah. you take off, obviously, the mask and what's underneath. They're saying Matthew Stafford was a mask on. Boom! This is what the internet's already saying. Oh, my God. God. Not just this, by the way. And this is because he threw two picks to a guy that said, uh, uh, Stafford stinks in the offseason. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, the, the guy, Jimmy Ward, I believe, Jimmy yep. Ward uh -huh. actually said in the offseason, it's Stafford. What are we even talking about? I thought potentially he was going to get lit up last night by Matty Stafford, Sean McVay, who incredibly competitive people and talented and drop a lot of weapons. That You, you just... You watch the game, and then all of a sudden, is Carson Wentz better than, than Matthew Stafford? Oh. That, that is something going around here. Is Chris Ballard? <laughs> did Chris Ballard get this right whenever he brought old two sprains to Indianapolis instead of Matthew Stafford? This is because one night, now the number two wide receiver on an offense that is incredibly efficient in the passing game is out. Yeah, right. We just assumed Odell Beckham Jr. was going to be able to pick that up. That's on me. That's why I'm ice cold. That's why for the next Super Boost, I will not be picking it. I am handing over the reins to somebody else because the people betting alongside my Super Boost, I think they believe just like me. We're too optimistic. We give too much hope to things that seem to be spectacular. And we, we don't realize that, oh, they could potentially get fucking rocked tonight. I didn't yeah. even think that was a situation that could possibly show up. The Niners did their thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely did their thing. It was a must win. They were in the corner of the NFC West uh -huh. back down, coming out of some injuries, getting a little bit healthy. Jimmy Garoppolo, what's his future look like? And if you watch the Manning cast, I feel like you should just put 11 people in between the hashes. Yeah, right there. <laughs> that, is where, that, is, that is where Jimmy's going to throw the ball to. Literally, Peyton and Eli are like, why do, why do the Rams even have anybody on an outside shade? He is throwing the ball right down the middle. And then, by the way, they're running right down the middle. Uh -huh. this, is, this was Shanahan, literally. And it looked like a college offense because of all the misdirection, the amount of run and speed and everything going on. But in all those offenses, just like in the Niners, if they get going on first down, mm. it's over. Yeah. you got to stop on first down. They got to a second and 13 one time. And I think it was only once that they even got to a second and 13. I thought, ooh, maybe they're in trouble. They got to that fourth down. They fucking seem, boom, they're off and running. Yep. They were on schedule every single play, it seemed like. And there was nothing the Rams could do. And it wasn't until we were watching that, and I was watching that, that I thought, of course, this is how this was going to go. I don't think it's time to throw in the towel on Matthew Gofford no. or Matthew Stafford or the guy that's allegedly not as good as Carson Wentz, which, by the way, I'm happy Carson Wentz is playing good football. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Not too long ago, fade away, left hand, in yep. his own end zone, pick six. I mean, we, there's going to be bad games by all humans out there. But, boy, I did not expect the Rams to be that awful. On the flip side, very quickly, Al Michaels, legend. Yeah, yeah. be awesome. awesome. He was awesome. Incredible conversation. 75 years old. He's never ate, ate a vegetable before. Love that. Oh, thank you, Al. And, and by the way, he has a good time. Oh, and yeah. We all know Al Michaels does. Oh, yeah. He doesn't live like a, uh, you know, he's not doing the TB12 shit. No, no, He no. is just living, I think. Right. And 75 years old sounds amazing. Quick. That makes us all feel very good. Yeah, right? absolutely. Incredible. I mean, that makes me feel very good. I'm sure Bill Belichick's watching that going, I can coach on at least 75. You see fucking Al Michaels out there? He's yeah, having time right. of his life. He ain't like me. He was awesome. Phil Mickelson, 
awesome. Mm-hmm. Draymond Green felt like I learned a lot about him. Mm-hmm. There was a little bit of a situation where he thought they were still talking about his offsides for the Michigan State spring game yeah. as opposed to an actual offside happening in the game. Only stumble, I think, in that. I love Draymond Green after that with that conversation. And Phillip Rivers, I fell asleep in the middle of it. Nine kids, yeah. though, was incredible. He seemed to have a, a good personality. Manning cast, pretty good last night and the first night back after a week off. But the game, Ty, I, I, at Ty Schmidt, the Packers watched along that game, right? Mm-hmm. And the Packers watched that game and thought to themselves, okay, here's a team we're probably going to have to run into at some point. And do you think Packers fans are a lot more excited about the playoffs coming up? Or are you having a realistic view that that is not what the Rams are going to be going forward? Uh, I mean, excited no matter what, because I still think the Packers are better than the Rams are, especially if they have to play at Lambeau. And it's looking like, I mean, unless... The, they win the division. Like the Rams are probably going to have to play an away game in in the yep. first round of the playoffs. But because Cardinals, yeah, yeah, I don't think uh, they're dead. But doesn't it seem like they're kind of front runners? Like if they don't whoa, get whoa. if they don't get whoa. up early, like whoa, when they were whoa. down fourteen nothing last front night, runners. wow, they, it was just done. Like they need to get on teams. They've only the Bucks are the only team they've beaten this year that has a winning record. Like if they don't if they don't get up early and stuff, they just they kind of just collapse. Because like the run game really wasn't there last night. Goff, I mean, uh, ooh, excuse me. Whoa, wow. Stafford. Ty. No, 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 Stafford. no, no, no. What, what was that all about? Stafford. Don't be doing what the internet's doing. Jesus. I don't want hey, that was a Freudian slip, but it really does. Feel, like <laughs> when it when they were up fourteen nothing, it just didn't feel like the Rams could ever. Do, yeah, it was like okay, well, this game's over, and then the they couldn't get a stop either. It just feels like if they don't get up and they can't throw it all over the field, like they they just. Crumble. And I don't want to make the comparison to Goff even more so. Mm-hmm. But Jared Goff last year when he was at the Rams, Lions now, pretty good bet too, but with <laughs> with Goff, he was a great live better. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. you, you could see early with Goff yeah, yeah, yeah. whether or not he was going to have a good game. <laughs> like you could see early if Goff was in it or if Goff was out it. I don't know if it's still happening. I haven't been paying attention as much now that they're – Oh, eight and one. Maybe we should take a little look see into that potential live bet sure. hack. Sure. That is Jared. But Stafford, every time they showed him, there was no I didn't I didn't see any like, oh, this guy thinks that they're gonna be able to come back. Mm-hmm. I think Robert Woods not being yeah. out there is massive. massive. Yeah, huge. And I'm alongside a lot of other idiots that just thought OBJ would be able to just get in there and do that thing. The the game was fascinating, but those who hammered the Niners money line, which I guess a lot of sharp do 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 they did that do 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 how they know do 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 it's just because they fade the public. Mm, smart, yeah. but they're so smart, they're intelligent because they're betting mm-hmm. alongside the sports book. But they'll find a reason on why they think that and actually believe it, as opposed to just the fact that somehow, some way, when it feels like everybody goes one way, it's going to go the other way. Which is notes we have to take down to bet like the people that fade the public yes. and continue to make money and rake in money. Although my emotional investment in what I want to see go sometimes overrides that, we can still get better. And it's not until Thanksgiving where these bets really start to matter. That's, that's when right. real football yeah, starts. That's right. Bill said it. Bingo. Bill did say it. He, we like to be good all the time. Yeah. That's, that's right. actually what he said whenever he was asked about his teams getting better and playing better. As a, we like to be good all the time, Chris. Let me just, uh, just shut the fuck up, Chris. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're, trying to, we're trying to play football good all the time. But Tone Diggs, the sports books had to just rake in last night. They actually. raked in last night. They've been raking in the last month because dogs are hitting at an unprecedented rate. Um, and people love overs and people love favorites. Uh, so the, the books have been doing pretty well. Last night, I'm a big favorites guy. You know, I, I just, I love the people that are just supposed to do it, going out there and fucking doing it. Oh, yeah. But my heart's been broken this. Yeah. What is the record? What is the record? Here we go. Dogs are 87 62 in one against the spread this season. Absurd. That's yeah. in. Sanity. NFL underdogs went nine and five against the spread, which is, by the way, explains why I, I had such a right. absolutely horrendous weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I don't want to say I'm a front runner, but I like the greats. I'm like, hey, these greats are yeah. going to be great. You I think great should good be teams great. To win. I, I think greats should be great. Like, I just think that should happen. But we have to remember long season, humans, chemistry matters, camaraderie matters. But boy, that Rams got their asses. The Rams yeah. slaughtered. They seem so, like, they're, listen, they're seven and three. So let's not. 
But, but oh, believe me, whenever the score was up there and they have their, their name and then they have the record right underneath, seven and two, I'm like, how the fuck did this team? Uh -huh. yeah. but how is this team seven and two right now when we're looking at other teams that have terrible, like the Colts, like the Patriots, sure. like other teams? It's like, how is this team seven? It's because it is a long season. It is grand. Look what happened with Dallas and Denver. Mm -hmm. And then look what happened to Dallas Falcons, I guess, one week to another. But still, that was alarming. I they think. seem so much different than, than last year, though. Last year, they had the number one defense and they had a run game that was just awesome. Now they don't run the ball at all, and they also can't stop the run. I don't know how that happens just in one year. Yeah, and is it is it scheme? Is it? They did lose Lost obviously Brandon Staley yeah. and some players. Well, I got to remember Brandon Staley also. I mean, he was also quarterback not, at Dayton, the right? Run, yeah. He was quarterback at Dayton, but he's defense coordinator, so he sees the game through. Oh shit, yeah, it's quarterback it? eyes. That's yeah. interesting. That's why he's head coach of the Chargers. They're not winning any games either, but they no. got they got the Pittsburgh Steelers wounded on Sunday night. Uh, Who is going to be able? To turn the page on a rough schneid. Pittsburgh Steelers or Chargers, we'll see that on primetime football Sunday night. Yeah. The Steelers are without 45 guys. Yeah. yeah, all the big ones. Ben Roethlisberger, he'll probably play, but what do we know about COVID? We don't know shit about fuck. No, That's right. Don't. So we might not. Because is it negative tests or is it symptoms? I believe it's negative tests because Devontae was able to play against the Cardinals if he got two negative tests and he was diagnosed on Monday. But that okay, but I'm saying, like, if you – is that within a 10-day period? If you get to 10 days and you still can't produce a negative test and you're vaccinated – and I'm only saying that because I am vaccinated. I had COVID. I could not produce – my test might have been much cheaper because they were coming from Walgreens or, or CVS or whatever. Maybe it was a little cheaper than what the NFL was having. I could not produce a negative test until day 11, even though I had no symptoms at that point for seven, eight days or whatever. It's got to be when they stop having symptoms because otherwise, like, why, why would you punish a guy for being vaccinated when if you're unvaccinated, you only have to be out 10 days and you don't have to give a negative test? Like, Zito might have a stat back here. Uh, I don't have the stat, but didn't Aaron have to take a test to get back in the facility? Uh, no, he was no, 10, 10 days, days. 10 asymptomatic. Days. Yeah. So oh, that's okay. why he put a tweet out that said Aaron has been asymptomatic. And everybody was like, no, I got tagged. By the way, it was another. Of course. Yeah. No, he said it. He actually went through it. It was like, no, he'd been asymptomatic for a certain amount of days, which means he's no longer contagious, which is what I read into. But I was still scared to even go outside until I produced a negative test. I, I literally was like, I don't want to be anybody's reason for anything that mm -hmm. happens or whatever. And I've already been locked down in isolation basically for nine days. I'll wait for the, the negative test, even though I've felt incredible and then they say well if you have any uh symptoms it's like well what about my the congestion in my is that a symptom or is that a side effect and then where do you get into the you just i assume they have m better testing to For find sure. out if they have it than i was to. getting have to it's a lot of gray area there is there's so much because yeah. we once again we don't know shit about fuck uh -huh. Uh -huh. that's right but if Roethlisberger's out, Chase Claypool's out, TJ Watt's out, Minka Fitzpatrick potentially out, Juju Smith-Schuster's been out, Tewitt's been out, Tyson Alualu's out. Two starting guards Joe are Hayden. out. Joe Hayden out. He's in a boot. Oh, Jeez. no, Slow what's Mike Tomlin going to do? Shoot. Are they going to look like the Rams? Are they going to look like the Rams out there? Oh, are they going to lay an egg on primetime television? If Mason Rudolph is quarterback, for sure, yeah. Oh, no, oh, no. No, 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 And apparently, fucking. On prime time. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, no. Apparently, Dewey didn't give a fuck about us dressing on Sunday either. Oh, no, no, no. He was just on his phone all warm ups, wasn't even warming up. Oh, oh no, no. I'm not giving you guys more shit. So uh, you can. What? Oh, we're just saying, like, it's like the what now. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. 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 for telling it is. And I don't even know why we're spending this much time on Steelers Chargers <laughs> on Sunday night, but that game last night honestly was insane, absurd, and I apologize for the super boost not hitting. And I would like people to have a little bit more, you know, look into it a little Everybody's linking together the risk-free same-game parlays Whoa. that are a plus a thousand with the super boost. No, it's not the same different. Thing. I'm, taking a lot different. Of, I'm taking a lot of heat on the streets <laughs> for never producing a winner. I have produced winners in the super boost. Yes, mm -hmm. go on the record. Those Many. people who are giving you heat are bullshit. And also, that was the best game the Niners have played all year by far. They right? lost the last four. They haven't won a home game. Correct. Since last year against the Rams, it's been eight straight at home. They stink or whatever. Yeah, no, it's just. Shanahan does uh, very well against McVay. 5-0 yeah. in the last five, I believe. Shani, oh. Shani owns McVay. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Oh, that's something to remember, I guess, huh? What's that all about? He's against like, the rest of the division, I think he was like eight and one against the Cards, like seven and three against Seattle, and then he was three and five against. This is uh, McVeigh. McVeigh against the Niners, yeah. They look three terrible. And, terrible. Six now. I mean, they bad. looked very, very bad. Matthew Stafford looked very bad last yeah. night. Yeah, nothing was going. But who doesn't say they bounce back? Yeah. Get back in SoFi Stadium. The energy comes alive. They get back at home. They they get the uh, anti monkey butt that Mike McCarthy yeah, gave yeah. to the Smart. Dallas Cowboys, and oh, they get Dale. going today. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. How do you think it's going to go? What do you think is going to happen at Boston, Connor? Obviously, uh, you get to ride alongside this entire thing, and you become one of the poster boys for mass holes. Basically, I think sure. for a lot of people that are, are necessarily oh, yeah. not familiar with Boston, Massachusetts people. Whenever you learn about Aaron mm -hmm. through these Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays. Oh, yeah. And I know, you, no bull, you're on Mac Jones, Team Mac Jones. Forever. Who? No bull. Always. <laughs> By the way, Tyron Matthew came out and said, a lot of y'all motherfuckers were uh, kind of clowning Mac Jones yeah. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now you're all in on board. The dude's a baller. Tyron Matthew has no tie no, to no. Mac Jones. He knows. He's in the AFC. Mm -hmm. He went to Alabama. He didn't even go to LSU. Like, there is no time. Tyron Matthew might be watching. Is he watching film and just being like, this motherfucker is <laughs> yeah. unbelievable. I'm not her such a But when you listen to Aaron, do you enjoy it? Do you wish he was your quarterback? Do you, do you think to yourself, what is Aaron? Like, when we go into these conversations, what is your mindset as a non-Packer fan, as a mass hole? What is your thoughts on Tuesdays? Well, I just like to listen to people who are, you know, exponentially smarter than me. So it's very fun to hear someone like Aaron. I definitely don't wish he was my quarterback strictly because he is 37, you know, max 23. I'll uh, enjoy course. the next 20 years yeah. of my life uh, of as course. I watch football. Yeah. Uh, but no, I'm excited to see how he felt about Sunday. I mean, 17 to nothing, the defense. This might be the best Packers team as a whole that, I mean, at least I've seen since A.J. freaking Hawk. Yeah, when 50 was flying around out there. Yeah, yeah I hit button people right what? in the face. Why? Why? Helmet to helmet tackling. Why? Yeah, we play big boy football here in the NFC doors. AJ Hawk from Ohio. What? Stevens A list. Yeah. I just seen it. Uh -huh. Packers number one team. Number one. Is that right? Wow. And I, I think everybody. You know, we've been having this conversation for a while now about how, you know, the Cowboys are ranked ahead of them, the Cardinals are ranked ahead sure, of them, no and that first game against the Saints was bad. It's tough. A terrible first impression, yeah. mm -hmm. especially after the entire offseason it was. But I think everybody with a brain, no matter what their personal opinion is against Aaron Rodgers at this point, understands that, oh, when Aaron starts clicking on the offense side like he does and normally does, with the way this defense has been going here, they potentially can go. But it is week 10. Yeah. Going into week 11. What will Joe Barry and what will the health wise be? Because Whitney Merciless is out now for the rest of the season, they're yep. thinking. Mm -hmm. but then, hey, great run. Hey, good run. Thank run. you, Whitney. I'll remember it fondly. I really will. Yeah, you'll, th you'll hear the name and you'll say, man, that guy helped us out. Great Packer. That guy helped us out. He did. He, got, he just came over from what, Houston? Yeah. Yeah, yeah just came yep. over from Houston mm -hmm. at the trade deadline, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And played three games, four games. Three games, I think. Yeah. Got a couple pressures, helped the team. Yeah, a couple sacks. Had a shutout with it. I mean, it, great yeah. run, but now they're going to have to figure it out as people get healthy. How do they continue to grow? And I'm excited to hear Aaron's thoughts from playing and practicing against these guys. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, what have you seen from the first couple weeks that is now? Because this defense looked terrible earlier in the season yeah it was a threat a liability it was something that could potentially take the packers out but now it seems to be a lot of people say hey, that's the strength of the team that's the strength of the team that defense and they have been there's no reason not to say that it's kind of like what we always talk about too like there are some years where you know like when you are a very opportunistic defense like if you're not getting turnovers in bunches or getting sacks and stuff like that it kind of sometimes shows up like they've They've had they've won the turnover battle big time, you know, for the last however many weeks. Like they're actually they're not necessarily getting a bunch of sacks, but they're getting a lot of pressure. And like you said, with the offense, like they still haven't really clicked completely yet. But like, guess hey. what? In a playoff game, like Rodgers is going to put up points. Let's so. talk about clicking yet or whatever on offense. And everybody says Aaron loses. He, he threw like 300 yards, I think. In a, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, converse, that whole narrative, if you actually look into it, is pretty much bullshit at this point. Mm -hmm. But like OBJ going to the Rams, the internet let their jokes fly. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Imagine if OBJ them. goes to the Packers, what happens, you know? But he goes over there. They lose. Stafford allegedly tries to force one. Oh, yeah. Force one to him. OBJ zigs. <laughs> Stafford thinks he's zagging. Sure. Obviously, it's a punt down inside the seven or the six or whatever. I, I, but OBJ is now being crushed as a, a team killer. Yeah. 
That's real. That's happening on the internet. That's insane to me because he and Matthew Stafford didn't have the chemistry together or whatever. But building up that camaraderie and being able to be on the same page, that really takes time. Yeah. And the fact that Aaron, you know, was able to win against Arizona with guys he doesn't know and Devontae, mm -hmm. and as AJ Dillon continues to grow, it is like that offense is only going to mature, probably. We assume. Yeah. That's what every team is hoping for. But it hit week 11, this is a long road still going mm -hmm. here. Well, you know, we got another two months until we get to the playoffs. Same deal. Like, he was rusty and he missed a couple passes that, like, he never misses. You know, to Devontae running like a slant where it's like, okay, well, that's, that's 20 five yards right there like he might yeah. take that to the house it was like you could just tell like i mean again no matter how good he is he missed 10 days worth of practice or whatever like and what happened to his fucking toe well huh. and like oh. you mentioned with like the respiratory and the hard stuff like i i wonder like how strenuous of a game that was because it i mean you know it like it, it was three zero going into the fourth quarter like it was it was a terrible and football contested. yeah big time it was Big a time. terrible football game. But I wonder, like, how, how, especially with, like, the cold weather and everything, like, I'll be interested to hear how COVID actually affected him. All right. Uh, we got Colleen Wolf joining us in a few minutes, but let's bounce around the NFL a little bit from uh, some of the storylines here. An interesting stat has made its way onto the Internet. The Titans have 20 players on IR right now. 20. Jesus. Okay, and I don't know what the baseline is for normal, but they have 20 guys on IR, which is the most in the NFL, and they've dressed over 80 players this season, oh which is the most God. in the NFL. Uh, 260 man games lost due to injury first. Okay, 260... Oh, so that's if you count the games those 20 players on IR have man games. Man games is a big hockey thing. That's like for every player... That's one game that's missed. Like for the 20 guys that missed game, last that's week, player, that's 20 man games. So yeah. right now, we're each having one man game. Yeah, yes. that's in right. In show. Yeah, we're uh -huh. having a man show right now. Right. But if Ty was at and we were in and we finished the week he didn't, he would have four man shows. We would have five man shows. Yeah, Correct. Right. All right. Classic. No, no. Is NFL Reddit from Canada? Or is that why they're doing hockey <laughs> talk? We <laughs> might be. Could be. Hey, shout out. Who, hey, Got hey, Paul, is that Gumpy running? Yeah. Hey, is Gumpy ball. running the NFL Reddit Twitter? Where did the Ravens have that one time? Didn't they have a shitload? This year. Early in the season. Early yeah. this season. Yeah, they had like five running backs. Remember, mm -hmm. the, that was, but now Tennessee is way up. Tennessee is the most injured team in the NFL, and yet they're the AFC number one seed. After playing the hardest strength of schedule, that shouldn't be possible. <laughs> is Vrabes the guy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vrabes puts on the boxing gloves. He puts on the uh, the chest protector. Sure. Mm -hmm. He goes in there and battles with his team every single day. Smokes 75 cigarettes. Yep. Legend. Drinks 45 bottles of whiskey. Yeah. Why? Eight and cans then, of chew. Boom. At one time, <laughs> yeah. he's talking top shelf, bottom shelf, and he's got the side doors covered. Oh, yeah. And he's running sprints with the team, and he's saying, I don't care who's hurt, who's playing. Whenever you get on his field, we're winning fucking games. The teams they have beat with the strength of schedule conversation. Oh, yeah. Bills, Chiefs. Colts twice. All right. Rams. Rams. Beat right. the shit out okay. of them. Okay, I mean, I, I understand what you just said. That was before Jonathan Taylor became a guy. True. Right? Yeah, come on. True. But you're right. Did beat a red hot Colts team right <laughs> yeah. now. Beat the Rams. That team, is it sustainable? That is always, that's such a negative way to look at it. Mm -hmm. Such a negative way to look at it. I feel like an asshole even thinking it. But look at how many players they have hurt. In the NFL, people are going to get injured. This is yeah. just how it goes. That's why you see a lot of teams loading up in positions that whenever somebody gets hurt in a prime time or a big game or late in the season, they end up being fucked because they got to change their offense because they didn't have this weapon or that running back or this. They're loading up in different positions because one injury can completely kill your offense in the most important time. Times. Them just being able to cycle through, next man up, how you doing, keep it moving, and still win. Adrian Peterson is their running back, mm -hmm. but they completely changed their offense after Derrick Henry got Ooh, injured. Yeah. Although all day is back there, and all day is a stud, a legend, everything like that, and still a threat so Tannehill can do a play action. They have changed their offense. He's not 85% of the offense like Derrick Henry was. No, no. They've adjusted. They, all these different players, what's your strength? How can we do this? What can we make this better? How do we make a defense that has a guy who's coming in on a Thursday, yeah. buy in and be able to play on a Sunday for the number one team in the AFC? 
I think that should be applauded with old Braves now. Yeah, Julio going on IR. Like you just mentioned, random guys stepping up. We were watching the game in number 88. 88. Marcus Johnson. Yeah, never heard of this guy, and he's making plays all over the field. And the other backup running back, Deontay, Deontay Foreman. Foreman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, were on, uh, we were on a Spaces on uh-huh. Twitter. It was supposed to be a halftime Spaces, and then that rolled into third quarter or whatever. And 88 scored a touchdown or something like that. Yeah. And I, I even said, because he was on a TV that was like right here. So there was a couple times where I saw 88 flashing across the screen. I'm like, who the fuck is an 88? <laughs> and then I started watching. This guy was making plays. And it's like the evaluation of who you let on your team, who you bring in, how you get them to understand the offense. Tannehill dealing with everything on the offensive side. That defensive side completely flipping it around. I mean, what a fucking coaching job over there in Tennessee. I feel like a lot of times, too, like people say, you know, how like a team needs to embody like a coach's personality. And a lot of times that's bullshit and it just never happens. Like you can legitimately see it with the Titans. It's like, oh, okay, these guys are like you can tell Vrabel is the one who's leading this team. And by the way. This isn't the first year this has happened, but right. this is the most mature this team has been. Remember last year when they do see Dode on the Ravens logo? Oh, yep. yeah. Vrabel said, just coach your guys Yeah. Mm-hmm. to hardball. Mm-hmm. If your guys got a problem with it, tell them to come fight them. If not, just fuck off. How about that? And I love that instead of Har- our Vrabel going, I'm sorry our guys did that. Vrabel was like, uh, we'll, we'll deal with this later. And then the Ravens, obviously, yeah. they, 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 they did it right again. on yeah, them. Back. And I think Vrabel probably appreciated that. I think that's why you know having a player like Vrabel get into coaching is so magical. I don't know if it's a normal thing. I think he might be an anomaly. Everybody's like, let's find a Vrabel, find another Vrabel. I don't know how easy that's going to be. Oh, no. What a run by them. Joining us right now, uh, the voice, basically, Thursday Night Football. Oh, yeah. An absolute superstar on NFL Network, host of the Round the NFL pod, on the clock podcast with Blue Wire Pods. Oh, yeah. Good morning football on the weekends. Yeah. Absolute superstar, ladies and gentlemen, Colleen Wolf. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Hello, hello. Great to see you. Hey, it is great to see you as well. We can't thank you enough for joining us again. You crushed for us the last time, and uh, I know you got a busy schedule. You have 45. Hey, Colleen, you got 45 fucking jobs, dude. You're crushing it out there. Yeah, I mean, I don't sleep, but that's okay. Listen, uh, by the way, I just want to tell you, uh, your accent, it sounds like my entire family. I didn't realize that you were from Plum, Pennsylvania, buddy. I was just Googling exactly where that is in the state. Same state. I'm from outside of Philly, and seriously, my whole family sounds like you. Well, is it Philadelphia accent? It's a little bit different. You guys dropped the Johns in there, uh-huh. and like the, yeah, the water. I know. I actually have my John bracelet on right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you got the O's and the home and the phone, yeah, yeah. and I love it. Great uh, to see you again, my friend. Hey, great to see you as well. Philadelphia, an incredible city. I mean, obviously, Pittsburgh's better than Philly, but I mean, that is... <laughs> we don't have enough time. Colleen, we don't have enough time. It's a shame. Let's get into... Uh, Let's get into last night in the NFL as a whole. Right now, underdogs are winning at a rate that they never have in the past. This this weekend, nine and five, the dogs won against the spread. Last night, obviously a huge, huge shot to everybody in the NFC about what the Niners just did to the Rams. Why is the NFL the way it is this year, Colleen? I mean, you're right entrenched in the middle of all of it, interviewing all the people involved. Is everybody think it's as, as insane as we do? I mean, how about on Thursday night last week with the Dolphins beating the oh, Ravens? Yeah. I mean, we all saw that one coming, right? Robert Hunt, my new best friend. I love him so much. But this is like a crazy mixed up NFL, and I love it. I love every single thing about it because, come on, if like these teams that were supposed to win were winning, then come on, it's boring. No, last no, night, it's, it's not. It's actually pretty profitable team. gambling. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm yeah. sorry to all. The, I don't What is gambling? What is betting? No, no. Hey, you crush it. FanDuel's on the third. Thursday night football show and you crush it you actually you probably because you're from philly by the way that oh, is yeah, yeah probably a pretty natural thing you crush it on there but you're right i guess it, do you think there's gonna be a time where these teams find their level or do you think we're in for a lot more shakeup? you think the next few weeks well- I've been waiting for these teams to kind of level out and come back around because every year you have like a certain couple games that are kind of like mulligans or weird things that happen. But like even just the AFC in general over the last few weeks has just been so hard to figure out. And then 
with you have last night what happened with the Niners and the Rams. I mean, the Niners beating them by three scores. Yeah. I guess I shouldn't be surprised because the Rams always lose to the Niners. It's just like this weird thing. But when the Rams have lost this year, they have lost really bad. They've lost control. They don't look like themselves at all. They completely take their hand off the wheel. It's like me on Fridays after TNF at the airport. I just like completely, I, I'm a disaster and that's how I like it. But I don't like seeing my Rams that way. Yeah, I can understand that. And I mean, whenever you're just kind of sleepwalking through life, it's uh, you can find some beautiful moments of clarity in there too. So I'm sure Fridays are rather enlightening for you after you crush it <laughs> on Thursday Night Football. And, and the early remarks out of the Stooge crew here in the internet is, mm -hmm. oh, the Rams are front runners, okay? They, whenever they, when things go bad, they can't get there. How do you think they get past that? And do you still think the Rams are gonna be in uh, contention at the end of the day? I think they are. This is just a, a blip in the matrix, just like the Cowboys Broncos. Do you think the Rams find a way to not be like what you said you are on Fridays? <laughs> I think so. I think that they will be able to find a way because, come on, we have seen them play at such a great level, and it's a division game that they lost against the Niners. You know how these division games can go oh, sideways. sideways yeah. And, yeah, they lost to the Titans, who are really good. You were just talking about how great they have performed this year with Mike Rabel doing his thing and keeping this team in check. But then also they lost to the Cardinals. And that was another division game. So this is a team that top to bottom, they're very good. And sure, we were all waiting for Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, and so Von Miller to come mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. in yeah. prime time yeah. and do their thing. And it didn't happen. It was a little yeah. bit of a dud, yeah, a but that's okay. I'm not worried. I think it's going to get a little bit better. Uh, you know, prime time players make prime time plays in primetime games and Odell Beckham Jr. plus 320 to score a tud. I mean, I just thought that was come on. just a natural oh. hand out. A natural handout. It didn't happen. Uh, do you, the Thursday night football games, what access do you get to all the teams? And do you get a chance to hear players and coaches that hate Thursdays, love Thursdays? What is kind of your, the response that you get every single week dealing with Thursday night football? Uh, Pat, I don't know what you're talking about. Everybody loves <laughs> Thursday night football. Yeah, of course, of course. Everybody knows that it's never sloppy. Nope. Weird <laughs> things don't happen. Everybody is well-rested and refreshed and rejuvenated, just like I am right now on the show. But we do, we get to talk to the players. And obviously, at the end of the show, for our post-game show, we have the star of the game on, and they have just won, so they feel great. And they're like, you know what? No problem. This was an awesome show. This was an awesome game for us. But... Yeah, we hear a lot on Fridays from the losing team about it being a short week. And then, of course, with injuries kind of folded in there. It's never great. But for us, it always works out well. I mean, even if the game seems terrible, like was last week with the Dolphins and the Ravens, my God, I felt like the game never even started. But then once it did get going, it was perfect and it paid off with Robert Hunt. Yeah, I agree. Robert Hunt with that touchdown. Ooh. How about the refs? <laughs> Okay, how about the refs letting the play go? All right, immediately illegal. Hey, probably blow it dead. They let it go, and then they spot it wrong, and then they take it. I mean, there was just a, a comedy of errors, and I don't want you to get in trouble. You obviously work for NFL Network and do a lot of that. These refs, though, I mean, geez Louise, call I know. They stink. I know. You know what? It is... It's tiring to watch, especially with the taunting calls. I'm with you. I will probably get in trouble. I'm in the middle of the newsroom, by the way, right now. Whoa, whoa, like, what's going on? We got any news? We got any news? Who's around? Anybody cool? Is uh, Michael Orvin? Actually, Orvin's no, it's just like an empty, I'm in a glass case of emotion. There's nobody else here. <laughs> So uh, I, I feel like, though, at any point since I'm talking about the refs, that, like, this whole ceiling is going to come crashing down on me. But my favorite thing from this past week, Pat, was, I don't know if you saw the dude, the fan, at the Cowboys-Falcons game that was dressed up as a ref, and he was just throwing flags oh, at Falcons fans and that. blowing his whistle. It was fantastic. So shout out to that guy. Yeah, I mean, people dressing up as refs is never a compliment to the refs, I don't think. I don't think no, I've ever no. seen mm. one. But maybe we should change that right here right now so the roof doesn't fall on your head over there that's in sofi right that that whole new studio is gorgeous right oh it's beautiful i'm actually looking out the window uh right behind where the screen is at sofi it's gorgeous it looks like something from uh marvel just kind of dropped into los angeles just in the middle of this neighborhood in inglewood yeah well, 
<laughs> well, six billion or something. Yeah. It's supposed yeah. to be two yeah. billion, and then it ended up being like six. That thing can't handle a rainstorm, though. So if it starts lightning, get your ass out of there, Colleen. Yeah. All right. I got you. No problem. Need you to be safe. This uh, this Thursday, what is it? Patriots Falcons. Oh yeah. Yeah. Falcons just got ran out of a building, mm -hmm. and the Patriots seem to be getting hot. What are early indicators for you, Colleen, going into a beautiful Thursday night? Well, I'm really excited to see Mac Jones coming off a career day. Oh, he was yeah. so good this past week, setting a completion, high, no I think goal. career highs in completion percentage, passing touchdowns, passer rating, whatever, you name it. Also, we found out he's a child model, or he used to be, so mm -hmm. I don't think he's modeling still, but you got to check out those photos because they're fantastic. Ramondre Stevenson also Shit. ran the ball so well. This Patriots team, they've been really playing great complimentary football, and that's been the key to their success. Their defense is playing better as well, and I'm just so sad for the Falcons and Matt Ryan at this point. Mm. He's making a hundred million dollars. He couldn't yeah. move on from school. Yeah, you're right. You're right. He's cool. He's fine. Yeah, he's trying. He's moving too. Yeah. He's Artie Smith down there is, uh -huh. you know, drawing up some success. I guess they just ran into a Dallas Cowboys team that, you know, Mike McCarthy did the anti monkey butt. Right. And they were ready to go after an ass beating, which I assume will happen for the Rams and maybe the Buccaneers this upcoming weekend. We're uh, talking to Colleen Wolf, host of Thursday Night Football, uh, what, kickoff show and then post show? Is that an accurate description? Yes. Game day kickoff, the post game show, the whole bit. You guys do well. I think it's good coverage. Steve Smith. He, oh, oh yeah, boy. He is, yeah, I love any time, he, give me the camera, which <laughs> any time that happens, you know something amazing is about to happen. The show when is When he good. calls for his single, I mean, listen, Steve, not very opinionated. He's no. pretty <laughs> even tempered. Yeah. He doesn't really like go out on a limb or anything like that. Oh my God. I love, whenever we talk about Baker Mayfield, oh. just like sit back, relax. I put the quarter in, I let him go. Yeah. Well, I'm sure Baker isn't exactly thrilled about that, but yeah. Steve, <laughs> I mean, it is absolutely wonderful. Go ahead, Ty. Colleen, do you still have your ears to the ground in Philly? What's the temperature like there with Sirianni? Because it seems like when they get beat, everyone thinks he's a doofus who should get fired. <laughs> and when they win, they say he's the second coming of Bill Walsh. So what, what's going on there? You seem like you know Philadelphia very well. Have you lived there before? Are you actually an Eagles Yo. fan? Because you might be, based on what you're saying. Like, that's exactly what happens. When they lose, it's terrible. The sky is falling. Nick Sirianni is talking about flowers growing in the ground and roots and, and how things really need to, you need to water. I don't even know what he's talking about half the time. But then when they win all right, maybe this guy shouldn't be ran out of town. So at this point, coming off the win last week against the Broncos, right now it's a building block situation, and maybe they can sort of make a some type of fake kind of run at this point. Oh, but plus 260. Hey. I hey, love him. Hey, plus 260 to make the playoffs for the Eagles. I don't think they were ever out there. Are you from Philadelphia? Yeah, I'm actually from Delco, so, you know. <laughs> Are you really? Yeah. I knew it. I knew I could tell no, right Colleen, away. Colleen, no, Colleen. I'm not. No, 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 I'm not. No, 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 Colleen, Colleen, he is a liar. Do not. So I am sorry liar. he did that. Jesus. He is from hey. John Wayne Gacy's Waterloo, hey, Iowa. She knows your pants. Neither. Come on. Yeah, now. I know. It's Dal Sandros. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 Del, Del Sandros. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Hey, by the way, he's he's got a good Sirianni as well. I mean, I'm sure. Sirianni loves it. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Colleen, you mentioned talking to the players on Thursday. Will you get a chance to talk to Bill Belichick about his uh, pregame outfits? And if not him, will you get a chance to talk to Steve Belichick and his tongue that just seems to only be outside his mouth during games? Focused. Energetic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't understand what's going on with his facial expressions during games. Sometimes I wish there was a camera just trained on him, but then as soon as it pops on my screen, I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to see that anymore. The fact, though, that we have been talking about Bill Belichick's wardrobe and his fashion style, like oh, yeah. the past couple weeks, I've seen a couple things with, you know, his sweatpants rolled up, he's got the jacket on. I don't know. He's making some changes around town, and I'm feeling it, guys. Oh, is it a midlife crisis? He's coaching for another 30, 40 years. Hell oh, yeah. He saw how Michael's at 75 on the Manning cast and knows that he's not necessarily the epitome of health, but it uh -huh. looks like he's not slowing down at all. Bill Belichick's still squatting out there. Goddamn right. Uh, go ahead, Tom. Colleen, when Steve yeah. Smith did what he did, talking about Baker, did Joe Thomas just sit there and take it, or did he push back? Like, What's it like on set when something like that happens? Uh, well, there's a lot of dynamics that are going on Good on work. set, but... 
I would say that based on Joe's reaction, I'm I'm not sure how much he disagrees. Whoa! <laughs> Joe is gonna shoot me for that. Uh, no, I think that Joe is so loyal. He's so beloved in Cleveland. He is so ride or die. So he stands up for his boy Baker. But Steve will speak his mind no matter what. Yeah, Steve's awesome. I mean, I, I was sitting right next to Rex Ryan when he did something oh, to Baker yeah, as well. That's right. that's right. And I even felt a little bit like, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little rude, but. Baker's about to get paid somewhere, probably, hopefully, who knows. Colleen, I don't know what you make. I hope they give you more. You crush it, and we can't thank you enough for joining us. Thank you, guys. I'm going to tear my sleeves off for you next time I see you as well. Oh, Later, respect. Buddy. Respect. Ladies and gentlemen, Colleen Roth. Thank you, Colleen. I got a text from Kyle Brandt while we were live. Oh, what's Kyle said? doing? He said, Colleen is beloved by everybody. She's going to crush herself. I get that. And I want to respond like, yes, yeah, she is crushing yeah. right mm -hmm. now, actually. She Thank did. you, Colleen. We got to get to a break. We, uh, we're we terrible at And by we, I mean me. You know no. what I mean? What are you talking about? Uh, are we playing music? Don't, don't leave me lonely. Oh, don't no. Leave me I don't. Mm. Is it muted on Spotify? Are we compromised? Uh, nope. It says it's playing. Show sticks. Um, don't leave me lonely. Don't leave me lonely. I got my, my, my mama told me. Hi, right, we're back in four One minutes. Uh, we Pat McAfee show here. Lonely. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Don't leave me lonely. November 16th, 2021. We'll take some phone calls I'm on the other I'm side. 1 833 4 McAfee. See you soon. I hate a lot of people for the way that they acted after that Friday thing. Do you, is, there's no way you're isolated enough that you don't hear any, you, you had to have heard. There's some massive names, politicians. I mean, your name has been spoke by a lot of people. There, are you just, cause you're like a, hey, love will cure this thing. How are you not gonna hold a grudge everybody? And do you know that you're probably never gonna win an MVP again? That's probably never gonna happen, right? I think that's, that's a legitimate, <laughs> legitimate statement. <laughs> <laughs> Legit, though. Like that, there's a lot of people that vote for that that I think are not faint. Like, do you, how do you isolate that? How do you stay away from that? Because you're talking about everybody on earth talking about you. That's not getting you down at all. I don't know. That's incredible mental toughness, if that's the case. Well, you know what? I think first, if you find your identi identity, identity, in yourself and you don't find your identity in the opinions of others mm. uh, you don't need that validation and that love from other people you can get it from yourself and that's not being selfish that's just learning how to uh in a healthy way love yourself and respect yourself um and believe in yourself and it definitely was tested you know by some of the comments that i that i heard and so i'm human i mean you know stuff can can definitely hurt your feelings but uh Look, I shared an opinion that is polarizing. I get it. And I misled some people about my status, which I take full responsibility of, those comments. But in the end, I have to stay true to who I am and what I'm about. And I stand behind the things that I said. And I you know, have a ton of empathy for people who have been going through the worst part of this pandemic, which has affected all of us in different ways. But so many people, um, you know, like I said, with lives that were lost, lives that were forever changed. Um, and I have a ton of compassion and empathy for those people. Um, and I have tried to help out, you know, as much as I can. Yeah. Um, the, the other stuff is so out of my control. And there's going to be people that don't like you and they don't, don't and, and, and hate you for things you said or might not even understand what you said or know what you said it might just you know a headline and that's fine um, i i believe that people are entitled to their opinion and even if it's the opinion that's unfavorable of me but i'm going to continue to try and be the best version of me uh, moving forward and i'm excited about uh getting back on the field as soon as possible hey do you know uh if offense or defense is getting introduced this week uh, in your game? And have you thought about it all, like what the reaction may be if offense is introduced and you're the last guy out? Have you thought about that? I think it is offense and I'm excited. There's nothing like running out of that tunnel last, especially. You think it'll be different one way anyway than your normal, uh, you know, how they normally respond? I'm not, I don't know. I'm, uh, I hope not. 
Hope they show that on, on, on the it. network. Oh, that'll, that clip will make its way. Oh, yeah. That clip will make its way around. I assume Raj had to walk in there and do a full, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, curtsy. Hey, I'm, we're coming. We're bringing a, a big sports stooge thing over here. Is that okay? Yep, deal. Perfect. Let's get some tea. Let's get the fuck out of here. How do you think that went between Raj and the Queen? You think she liked them? Yeah. yeah. I bet she liked them. She probably knows a lot. Like, what if she's sitting there and then all of a sudden she's like, so what about the Sean Watson situation? What about the Sean Watson situation? What about the Sean Watson situation? That was a spot on accent. <laughs> that one out of the park. Like, what if she's dude. really dialed in to the NFL? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here on Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, yeah. November 16, 2021. Really wanted to come back with the actual version of Don't Leave Me Lonely. Uh, what do you mean? Couldn't find it in here, though. Ah. So this is just some random. Uh, Z, Zeke got the uh, hey, baby, Zeke. This is a good song, too. This is uh, your friend. Oh, that that's the one? Yeah. Wait, it actually it's... says Connor's friend. And, and as I was clicking on it, I was like, oh, what is this? That was from your friend. Who is it? I don't know it's who it is. It's a good jam. Somebody up there in Massachusetts. Yeah, probably a big Tom up. Brady fan like um, Matt Damon. I don't know. Yeah, probably like Matt Damon everybody else. Matt yeah. Damon, oh, yeah. you know he's, he's not part of the Tom Brady or the Patriot crew anymore. What he is mean? part of the Tom Brady. You're right. Oh, he's on the Tom Brady train. He's, yeah, he's on the Tampa train. Speaking of the Tom Brady train. Yeah. Are we getting a last dance for Tom Brady while he's still playing? And is that starting tonight, 54 minutes on ESPN? Oh, yeah. Man in the arena? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of – I mean, Dick said this earlier, but it's real. There's 10 episodes here, 54 minutes long. This is potential last dance situation. And if any of the clips that they ran last night are indicative of what the actual show is going to be like, there's fucking in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Willie McGinnis is in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is going to be – Unbelievable! I can't believe this is happening while he's still playing. Yeah. Because there's still a lot to be wrote, I guess, in the entire story. But this is going to be wonderful. I can't wait for this. This is the type of thing that you would hope the people with millions and millions of dollars to spend on production and yeah. access and clips that these would be the things that they would continue to generate and create because everybody has a role in the sports media world. If you have access to all of the football clips in the history of football <laughs> because you paid billions and billions of dollars, why not use those in different manners? We appreciate it. This is going to be unbelievable. I love learning about why the greats are great. I, I always have. I've always been fascinated by it. I'm not sure everybody's that way, but I think The Last Dance made a lot of people realize, like, oh, Jordan has been notoriously known for how competitive he is, but actually getting a chance to look inside of how his practice goes, how his work goes. It's like, oh, he is a different different level of human when it comes to competitive stamina and drive and focus and grit and determination and hey i don't give a fuck who is in my way i think that is something that you will see uh a common thread amongst a lot of the people no matter what the sport or business is at the top of the world i love learning and getting insight into why these people who were born you know maybe they're in much better situations potentially maybe tom i don't know i guess we'll learn about this but these people that were born just like everybody else went to the same practices that everybody else got introduced to the game just like everybody else why are these people who probably run not the fastest not the strongest nope. not anything why are these people so damn good why are these people better than everybody else it's because of what goes on in between their ears and i think opportunities like this for man in the arena allows us a little bit of a you know a telescope into the brain of why tom brady's tom brady i expect there's going to be some alarmingly weird shit oh yeah, oh, yeah. For absolutely sure. i expect the tb12 thing the chocolate the thing that he was selling a couple years ago uh -huh. around the holidays the yep. chocolate he looked like an alien but i'm in I, I just can't wait to see the amount of commitment that this dude has put into be, being the goat and he is Oh, he, yeah. he is the absolute greatest of all time. That's why it's crazy it's happening now, but I appreciate the fact that Disney's doing it and ESPN Plus is doing it. Yeah, I thought it was like too soon. For, for non-Patriots fans, like for me personally, I don't want to watch 10 episodes, an hour each episode of Tom Brady being great and beating all of our fucking teams yet. Like whoa, it's, whoa, the, whoa, the wounds are The wounds are still too, they're still too fresh. Like it, give me 10 years and I'll watch it and I'll appreciate it. But right now, no, I don't want to fucking watch them. Well, that's the thing. 
it is happening in the middle of a season in which he is playing. Yeah. Has a good chance to win another Super Bowl potentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, we don't know how the story ends. What if he? By the way, what if he goes somewhere else? Yeah. What if LA? What if the Rams? In two years from now, say, hey, we need something. And he's still going. Like I'm not saying he would. It seems like the Tampa Bay uh, experience is one that he is going to ride off into the sunset. And why wouldn't you? It's a beautiful city down there. And the sunset is also fantastic. Oh, gorgeous. There. Off that bay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but there's a lot still to be had. And I think that's what a lot of people are questioning. But I'm excited to learn a little bit more about mm-hmm. old Tom Brady, the greatest of all time in the biggest league of all time. Yeah. Probably a lot of Michigan tonight, a lot of, you know, early beginnings. I, it will be That'll interesting be cool. to see who's in it because I assume Belichick won't be in it. And that'll be his post-career. But what if Belichick is in it? Yeah. It'd be unbelievable. Probably Clips for s- sure. Sneak that in the promo. Well, what if Bill Belichick actually alluded to that whenever all the shit was coming out from Wickersham's book? He was like, I, I just did four hours of fucking everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess we would have heard about that by now. Yeah, Probably. exactly. Man in the ring tonight. I can't wait to watch it. Manny Cast last night was dope. Can't wait to hear what AJ Hawk thinks, who beat my ass this weekend and against the spread picking. He'll be joining us in six minutes. We'll see you then. Cheers. So I'm going to give my weekly story when Pat comes on. Yes. Yeah, here we go. Oh, so, this is my bedtime story right now. <laughs> There's a couple refs that you just have it out for, or they have it out for you. And I'm like, you, before the game, I get the, I get the paper, yeah, I look, look at who the referees are. I'm like, fuck, I'm going to get a penalty called against me for sure in this game. <laughs> and uh, so, so I'll just say this, Bill McCreary. Where, oh, Wild Bill. We wild fucking Bill. hate that guy. Dude. <laughs> no, no, he's like a dude. He's a dude. I run into him actually in Pittsburgh all the time. So <laughs> I'm playing in New Jersey, and Bill, there's like a, whatever, they, the other team trips one of our guys, like a blatant call that's missed. I stand up on the bench. What you do is to be an asshole. I stand up on the bench, take my stick over the board. Just boom, 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 boom. I mean, you can hear it through the arena, right? Just boom, boom, boom. I'm like, come on. It just it shows them up, right? I'm like, come on. And all of a sudden, I see Bill just look across. He goes, whoo. And he's got like this heavy mustache like this. This mustache he's just eyeballing me across the way. And I, he looks at me. I'm standing up. I'm banging my stick. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so then... The play goes on, and I'm tying my skates. I'm on the bench. I'm going like this. I bend down and tying my skates. It's like the top of the boards is right here. My head's down. TV timeout. All of a sudden, I hear Shh. someone stops right here, and I look up, and Bill McCreary's like eyeball to eyeball, and he goes, he goes, "Are you showing me up? You want to fucking go? You want to go?" And he goes like this. I swear to God, he goes like this. He backs away from me. I grab my mic. He backs away from me from the bench and he goes like this come on come on <laughs> and, and i stand up and i go bill are you challenging me to a fucking fight i'm like you asshole you think i can't if i fight you i'll never play a game in this league again he goes let's go come on let's go tough guy <laughs> and i'm like i know my mind is going like in circles i'm like do i fight this guy like come back <laughs> what am i supposed to do like, I'm just like, and like he totally won he totally won he knew i couldn't do anything and i'm just like i just got by i was like you know what I'm like, fuck you. And I sat down and then it was like, I was like, he totally just dominated me right yeah. there. And then <laughs> the next game, the next game we played, I was taking the opening face off of the game. He's dropping the puck. He's standing there before the puck drop. I look at him, he looks at me. I look at him, he looks at me. And then finally I go, hey, Bill. I go, Billy, let's bury the hatchet, man. I'm sorry. I got away from myself last game. I go, I got away from myself last game. Like, this isn't, I, I don't, I don't treat referees like that. And he goes, no, I did too. I let the, you know, the heat of the moment get the best of me. All right, man. Truce. All right, cool. Truce. Drops the puck by the end of the first period. We're, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> this seems to be a thing with you. This and I run, into, I run into him all the time. He's a great dude, but that's how it is, man. He, he's got to fight his fights out there too to save face. Oh. Rough. Should I have fought him? Maybe yeah. probably not. Probably not. I mean, pretty good content. You fight a ref, but also like, um, probably banned for our brand, so. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Let me get the the Kornacki map out. <laughs> Don't you worry about that though, because the people. I mean, here even we can even do this. This particular shade here. A lot of this one, right here on this side, it's going to separate. Boop, let's move it over here. They're coming out. That son of a bitch! <laughs> right, selfish prick asshole! And then this side here, okay, and not all, not all, but either side, not here. They're on this side. This guy, he's a hero! <laughs> this guy's our hero! This is the MVP of the NFL, telling the NFL, ah, fuck you, and 
telling society and everybody, I ain't doing it because I have an allergy to two out of the three. The third I'm not comfortable with. I just hold, hey, this guy's our guy. This guy's our guy. But it's more complicated than that because there are some in both sides that are also against what the most other party is. So then you got this, you got conflicting wars <laughs> going on. Okay? That's what you have. You have some people that are on the left side. Well, so do I do the TV or mine? I don't know. I don't think it matters in this case. All right, you do the uh, you do the left side, and you think to yourself, "Oh, it's left versus right." But then, if you're a human in our society, and you actually pay attention at all, or have friends all across the spectrum, that is not the case. This is a torn, split thing. And Aaron Rodgers was the guy here that everybody came out to, and I'm so thankful. He came on and talked, but I don't know if it's going to change anybody. Yeah, yeah. This uh -uh. is still going down, and he's right here. He is right fucking here, and both of them. Pow, 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 pow. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Pow, pow, pow. We're back. With every answer he gave, it was like that, I guess, on the internet as I was scrolling through the last eight minutes. AJ. I went to one of his shows. He forced me into doing, he's wearing football pants. <laughs> I think he had actual knee pads. Does he have a fake <laughs> face on? Yeah, he has a fake face on. That is not Chris no Angel. Way. That or he's been eating McDonald's with Mark Davis for the last five years. I just want and everybody know. Straight to his face. I just want oh, everybody God. know this is NFL related. Okay, uh -huh. yeah. we have yeah, to talk have to about this. Yes. We have to cover it. Why is his penis a different color? He's wearing oh, football pants. Oh, 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 That's a. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, November 16th, 2021. And hour two begins right now. Yeah. There's a lot of sports to talk about. There's a guest that's about to join us that is an absolutely legendary figure in the history of human existence. But before we get to that, I would like to announce to everybody that today is also the revealing of the next book in the Aaron Rodgers Book Club. Mm. That's right. Although Aaron Rodgers Tuesday became an Aaron Rodgers Friday that the world had to react to, Aaron Rodgers Tuesday is a day where we get a chance to chat with Aaron about the game that was, the life that is, and then also cap it off with the end a book for the book club. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. I read the entire last book. Of course. The Daily Stoic was the one that mm -hmm. was pitched as week nine, week 10, mm -hmm. week 10's book club. And before we get to our guests, I'd like to read from today's book club day. The Daily Stoic is last, week, last week's uh, Book club book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's interesting because you're just supposed to read each one one a day. Mm -hmm. That's right. So this is actually a 365 <laughs> page book mm -hmm. right. that you read one page a day. This has been the best book in my eyes mm -hmm. that Aaron Rodgers has put up because it's actually relatively easy to read. Yeah. Uh -huh. Very digestible. It's a tweet. It's a tweet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a tweet. It's a book. I'm going to read a book. It's going to take me a year. Hey, that's all right. And I'm probably going to miss some days. So You're I don't know right. if it's the entire book. But today, November 16th, the reading of the Daily Stoic goes as such for the Aaron Rodgers Book Club. Hope and fear are the same. Hikado says, cease to hope and you will cease to fear. The primary cause of both these ills is that instead of adapting ourselves to present circumstances, we send out thoughts too far ahead. That's uh, Seneca from the Moral Letters, uh, 5.7b through 8. Okay. Wow. Interesting That one stuff. actually resonates with me. Well, there's more. 
There's oh, another paragraph really? today. Okay. Hope is generally regarded as good. Fear is generally regarded as bad. To a stoic like Hikado, known as Hikado of Rhodes, they are the same. Both are projections into the future about things we do not control. Both are the enemy of this present moment that you are actually in. Both mean you're living a life in opposition to amor fati. It's not about overcoming our fears, but understanding that both hope and fear contain a dangerous amount of want and worry in them. And sadly, the want is what causes the worry. Okay. Ah. Your daily reading from the Daily Stoic. I am only two pages into the Daily Stoic reading, seven pages into the timeline sure. of when I got it. I had to start the book at the very end, and I assume the next time I open it, it'll probably be mm -hmm. middle somewhere. Yeah, that's right. right. That's right. I agree with that guy. <laughs> Expect the worst, undersell, over deliver, all that. Well, I think it's just, it, just right now is the time. It right. seems like a lot of these books are oh. all about right now. Yeah. Be here. Why now. don't we just win right now? Nah. nah. Why don't we just enjoy right now? Nah. That's what Dom Ross said. Well, a lot of other, it's Ron, Ron Doss. Doss. You need to take a lap, dude. Mute his mic. Yeah. Ron yeah. Doss Damn will it. not be dumped on on these particular microphones in this studio. Dom Ross. You need to be here right now, okay? And not be out in that toxic planet that you're currently floating around in. He also Come said on. resignate, not resonate. But yeah, and he made me actually say it back to him. You know, it's like well, the first time I heard somebody say vodka. It's tough to say oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. anything other than that for eternal time, but I'm going to be here right now. You're still muted. It's Let's get to out. the all-time leading tackler. The Daily Coach is better. Well, Whoa. the Daily Coach is an email that shows up every day mm -hmm. that Michael Lombardi, uh, a couple other coaches send out, and it has a different vibe. You know, it, it has a little different a little vibe. They're, they're trying to get you to run through a wall uh -huh. That's right. and try to learn and be better, and it is motivating. I'll take the morning grump, and I'll read the Daily mm -hmm. Coach in the email, and I'm like, Paisan Lombardi was some <laughs> good gobble-ghoul here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Daily Stoic, though, this is, at, uh, this is a night before I go to bed. Kind of bring me down. That's yeah, really exactly. Nice. Okay. Kind of reminder as I go into La La Land. You I know? get it now, yeah. Dom Ross could be the next villain in the you know new Fast and Furious, though. Well, listen, if the family's coming together for yeah. Pablo, yeah. Dom Ross, Ross is going to be... Is Ram Das? Ram Das is dead. Ram Das has died. Ram yes. Das. Oh yeah, yes. this is the one. Well, I believe that, that Sun Tzu was. Sun Tzu. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyways. Dom. Not big reader. Daily Stoke is one that it's I could good. have, and, I, and I'm happy we all got to hear today's reading, uh, because one hour from now we'll begin Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, which will then move into Aaron Rodgers Book Club Tuesday, which oh, yeah. is all about the intelligence of the humans speaking in to the microphones during the show whenever Aaron Rodgers Tuesday is happening, and one of those is. Uh, the all-time leading tackler for the Centerville Elks mm -hmm. Ooh. in Centerville, Ohio. That's right. Okay. He's the all. By the way, legendary school. Oh uh, yeah, a lot of studs. Legend, a long time, but even more so, all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. Damn. Wow. Super Bowl champion, what? college football national champion, Holy shit. Ryder Cup champion, Ooh. father of ten. Ladies and gentlemen, from Ohio, don't hold it against them. AJ Hall. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, man? Hey, congrats on uh, on being from Philly, man. I, I knew your accent sounded weird, but now with a Philly accent, I, I could tell that didn't hurt very much. Well, Colleen, you know, she's she was great. I could tell you didn't uh, weren't upset instantly when well, she started saying. Uh, <laughs> you know, as she was, I because I thought she was going to say her family was from Pittsburgh because that happens a lot. People are like, "Hey, yeah. you sound exactly like my family." Whenever we have holidays, mm -hmm. they grew up in insert name of town or hill in Pittsburgh. That didn't happen at all. She's like, "Oh, I'm six and a half hours the other direction." Yeah. But she was awesome. Hey, she was she was incredible. She is awesome. Yeah, she's great. That, that Thursday night football show, um, you know, Steve Smith just mm -hmm. he is electrified. Yeah, he, he came on the show and we told him. I think I told him, hey, you got to be on Twitter. Like we get it. He doesn't even do Twitter or anything. No. He just shows up on that Thursday night football show, post game and pre show, and just goes. He is unbelievable. I really like that show uh, that they, they got cooking. And she gave us a lot of great insight about, you know, Thursday night football and everything that we've kind of experienced, but it's nice to hear what it is happening now. And the conversation about what the fuck is going on with teams this year is one that we're not the only ones having. It sounds like Colleen Wolf and the NFL network people are talking about this. I assume this is happening in all the networks and every single bar, every single house. What the hell do we know? We don't know shit about fuck with the NFL right now, AJ. I am, Colder than ice. This guy, they're calling him Jared Goff. 
Yeah. They're going to Whoa. Matthew Gofford after one bad night. Odell Beckham Jr., actual team cancer, people are saying on the internet. He shows up, they play their worst game. A team that hasn't won at home in a year wins their first game, and they also win the first game in four games. What happened to the Rams last night, and did you get a chance to watch the Manning cast? How was the experience? I mean, yeah, I absolutely watched the Manning cast, and you, you were correct. They, they showed your tweet talking about Phil. Phil was perfect. I wanted Phil just to continue to ask questions all night. I thought it was – all the guests were actually very good. But I, I think it's sometimes in, n not taking anything away from any of the guests. They need to have less guests and just let Peyton and Eli go. Like, that's what I want. Well, I agree with you. And we'll get to the game, I guess, here as we break down the Manning yeah. cast. <laughs> as we break down the Manning cast. But I – I agree with you because Peyton can't pay attention to the game as close as enough, yeah. uh, close enough. So he's doing this. If we get Peyton in the game, you know, and he's, mm -hmm. oh, what are they doing? They've been doing that. Been, that's whenever, uh -huh. when he gets pissed off about bad football, I think that is what we all love. Now, Al Michaels, unbelievable. Like, hey, look, I love Al Michaels. He's 75. That dude's 70. Terrible golfer. He is 70. I'm a terrible golfer as well. At least he's entertaining with it. You... Human piece of shit. <laughs> Most relatable. And he, he doesn't eat vegetables, I guess. I loved Al Michaels. Phil Mickelson, though, going in there, like we're watching because Peyton's here and Eli are here. I think a little bit more maybe setting them up to do more football stuff is good. But Phil understood that. I think Phil, I got a chance to DM with Lefty. No big deal. Yeah, mm -hmm. no big deal. sounded like uh, some, I was with my brother watching it, and he's like, man, these are like, he's actually asking like real in-depth questions. I'm like, well, yeah, Phil loves to gamble. I'm sure these are all gambling. <laughs> all right, so next week when you're playing, Tom, because we had our, our Peyton, when, it, when I'm betting on Tom, who's losing, what is he looking at when I'm doing this whole thing? But remember, he taught me that whole um, front foot yeah. Yeah. chip thing to make me a scratch golfer, which is going to take $20 million from you at some point, which is incredibly cool. And I'm very, yep. very yeah. pumped That's all it takes. It. Nobody, he's never told anybody else that. Everybody he tells becomes a pro. No offense to everybody else. You and I are not the same. I am a Martian, okay, when it comes to some of these types of things, especially when it comes to the no brain having stuff, like golf, when you're trying not to think, that is where I am at my prime. Like when, you're, when there's zero thinking, just, just naturally dumb idiot. I'm pretty good. And golf can become that from what I've been told, especially when you're so confident with the goddamn wedge and you can just make the ball dance on the green, which is what Phil Mickelson, the lefty, taught me. And he got dunked on last night by Peyton Tiger. Phil, hilarious because Peyton and Tiger are close friends. And we've always said Phil is the Powerade of golf. He, yeah, but yeah. he would have been Gatorade if Gatorade hadn't come around at the same exact time. But I didn't know how our relationship was. You know, I didn't know how me and Phil's relationship was, even though he helped me win $20 million in the future from you. Um, and he liked the tweet that I put out. So I sent a DM. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, you crushed on there. And he, he responded and said, thanks. He finds it also fascinating to listen why people are the way they are. And I think that's exactly how I am. Like, that's why I'm pumped for this man in the arena tonight. I think there's a lot of people that, like, the people that are at the top, I want to know why and how. Like, how'd you do it? Because everybody else is trying to do that thing. That was good from Phil. Like, curious, I think, trying to learn a little bit. Because that's what we're trying to get from Peyton and Eli, you know? Anybody that is is curious, like, will, like, all intelligent people are curious. They are. They ask questions. They want to know things. Phil does seem to be very intelligent. Peyton is super intelligent. You see Peyton bouncing questions back and forth. And I do love Eli going back at him and throwing little digs. Oh, yeah, hell of a call, Peyton, like after he says that they should punt the ball and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I would not. They're going to try to draw him off sides. Even, even though they took a timeout, I think it's going to be a delayed game or whatever. And then, boom, touch, yeah. touchdown, yeah. fourth down. It was – it was a, I, I, I enjoy that show. I appreciate what they're doing for sports media, too. You know, like, mm -hmm. it's awesome. that is not lost upon me that there might be some segments that maybe aren't exactly home runs, and there's some that are pretty good, but they are changing the game. And the fact that Peyton, you know, and Tom is on social media, and Aaron, like, th these are the goats, the stalwarts of the game, basically innovating, and I, I love that. I enjoy that. I'm a big, big fan of that in the sports media world. Let's talk about the game, though. Kyle Shanahan smacked McVay right in the mouth. Like, Kyle Shanahan, I guess, has done to McVay a lot. They ran it right down their throats. I mean, right down. A lot of misdirection. You know, a lot of, a lot of glitz, a lot of glamour, a lot of movement, a lot of this. Jimmy Garoppolo, if you're listening to Eli and Peyton, which you probably should do, he missed a couple of the motions, actually, because there were so many of the motions. He was, I think Jimmy was actually supposed to send him in motion there. He forgot. It was Juice leading the way, chipping. They were doing a lot of... A lot of Tosses inside, inside tosses, 
Absolutely unbelievable what they were doing. Is this more on the Niners being great or the Rams stinking, AJ, in your eyes? I, I would put it more on the Niners just executing a, an awesome game plan last night. Also, their defense can fly. Like, when they're playing yeah. well, you see how fast those guys are. Their linebackers, I love watching them. Like, their defense was very fun to watch last night. And I was a bit surprised that the Rams never found a way to get it going. But they out physical. Like, 49ers came out and they beat them up. And then that's why they won. Matthew Stafford's getting crucified. Oh, yeah. Hey. He'll be, he'll be fine, I think. Really? I think. Fine. Hey, you sure? said I think there. You said oh. I think there. Well, okay. Is this is this at all similar to like how the Bucks stumbled a little bit early on last year with their quasi super team? I agree. And then they had a bye week, and then they figured it out, and they changed their offense, and it feels like they're going back to what they were doing before the bye week last year. Tampa, what the fuck are you doing? Why don't they? They had it figured out. They had it all figured out. Do you remember playoff Lenny? Uh-huh. Yeah. And Ronald Jones, and then the play action that came mm-hmm. after that. Now they're out. They're without Gronk, and they're without AB, and that is obviously massive but they've gone away from what made i mean that's tom brady offense right there yeah and he usually doesn't make the mistakes he made like two interceptions in a game for tom Miss. brady yeah yeah one yeah, of misses. them being bad well you don't play for as long as tom brady has played whenever those things happen so obviously that's an anomaly but for the rams without robert woods a lot of people are asking are they going to be able to get going and i just assume so many superstars so many big brains they understand that the time is now maybe they'll be able to figure it out but there's a lot of people saying, what if they don't? And those people hate Matt Stafford, I think. I, I think those people hate Matthew Thank Stafford. You. People are saying Carson Wentz better than Matthew Stafford right now, which, by the way, as a Colts fan, I love that the internet yeah. saying that. Oh, I, yeah. I love the internet saying that. Carson, let's keep that thing going. I appreciate the hell out of what you've brought to the team in India or whatever. But one bad game primetime, Matthew Stafford stinks crowd very, very loud. I hope for his sake that he does come back and ball out. Well, I think like any how you how people evaluate players now, it's just it's a week by week thing. Oh, like you're saying, game. okay, Carson Wentz better than Matt Stafford. Are you saying overall you you would take Stafford or you take him over Stafford right now, or, or what are you saying? Like because next week we know it could completely change. That's what the NFL is. Hey, it was like that when you were playing too, right? I mean, quarterbacks or teams. I don't remember as, as wild of upsets and things happening like this year where you expect teams to win and then they get blown out do the underdog stat real quick so we can get aj's uh Shouldn't this happened last year during the covid year where you thought things would be messed up yeah but and then last year we all just assumed all oh, the good teams since they have the same exact situation everybody has the same situation the good teams will be able to figure out how to be great or whatever mm-hmm. this year nothing makes sense nothing and it has become pretty expensive on my FanDuel <laughs> account. <laughs> Nothing makes sense, which, by the way, I'm handing over the reins of the next Super Boost or two to somebody else. And okay. I can't wait to see who is doing it. Might be AJ, might be Tone, Claire. or Gumpy oh, on the yeah. Hammer Don Cowboys. Did you lose all four of your bets then last night? Yeah, dude. All right, I took it. <laughs> Did I lose two, all, both of mine? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. But you still beat me. So. Almost got the over, though. Not no. really. Oh, <laughs> It looked like it early on. I might get it. <laughs> if the Rams could have figured anything out, it did. But that stat there is wild. This weekend, nine and five. Uh, yeah, nine and five against the spread underdogs this past weekend. Eighty-seven, sixty-two, and one. It's absurd. And it's seventeen games. They were big underdogs too, though. Remember, the lines were huge. Yeah, look at this. Oh, and then yeah. this weekend, the lines are massive again. There's an eleven. There's a ten and a half. Yeah. There's multiple seven and a halfs. I mean, there is. I don't think anybody has a clue what's going to happen. Now, somehow the sports books continue to win. Right. I don't know how the fuck they know. I, I mean, what do they know that we don't know? I guess we have to start asking those questions. But this season has been absurd. And the Cowboys, I guess, are a perfect depiction of that. Just a week ago, Teddy Two Gloves was all the way back. The Broncos, mm-hmm. maybe after Von Miller gets traded, are going to be able to rally and go yeah. on a run that roster. And then they just, they, they don't. No. They, they did not at all. And then Dallas went the complete opposite direction. When are we going to figure it out, AJ? When do you think? When do you, the Thanksgiving? Is that the playoffs, the, maybe? I don't know. It might go into the playoffs where a team lays an egg like as they're going into the playoffs or something the last couple of weeks. I, this is, it's just, it's odd how the Rams continue to just not get anything going offensively, I feel like, last night. Well, Robert Woods being out, number two weapon in a pass-heavy offense, out is a big deal. Now, we just assumed, right? And they did force feed Odell. Yeah. yeah. Just like Tom Brady did to Antonio Brown whenever he was a Patriot down in Miami when Tom wanted a little bit more say on who his weapons were. Uh-huh. They brought in Antonio Brown out of the Raiders because he had just left the Steelers to the Raiders, celebrated. There was a lot of question marks going on in Antonio Brown's life at that time. It was not a great... Not a great time, I don't think, for Antonio Brown, the human, as opposed to Antonio Brown, the player. 
Tom Brady threw him the ball seven straight times. Yep. And that was a message to everybody. Like, hey, we are going to make this guy part of the offense. Also, I appreciate this guy being here. McVay and Stafford, first play, nobody else was getting looked at other than Odell Beckham Jr. I thought we were sitting pretty for the anytime touchdown. And then just a couple plays later, the punt happens for Matthew Stafford's right arm. And uh, uh, OBJ zigs instead of zags, which is what Matthew Stafford thinks. And now everybody's saying OBJ is a, is a cancer to to the locker room of the team, it, and it, it's just. I mean, come on. That's what people are saying, AJ. I, I know, I know. Like, like, can we have a few more games at least before you try to claim this? I, that's what. No, you can't nope. in this world. <laughs> and by the way, this is what the NFL would like, right? Yeah. Is for this type of instant reaction after every single game, even ten weeks into an eighteen week season. For it sure. is. It's hysteria at all times, and to be clear, I'm a part of it. I ride that, and I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I have no fucking clue. The Colts are one and four. The Colts are yeah. one and four. Now they're one of the hottest teams in the entire NFL. Let alone, now they they couldn't put away they couldn't put away the goddamn Jags, no. and they lost to the Ravens and the Titans after a fourth quarter collapses. So maybe they need to tighten up a little competitive stamina over there to yeah. keep the games going over there. But what we thought we knew at one time, we know nothing now in this league, and I guess that's why it's the greatest league on earth. To well, uh, to like your point of all like this happening and the underdogs and stuff like that there's 12 teams in the afc who have a winning record which is absurd and then in the nfc the 15th place team is the chicago bears and they're one game out of being the seventh place they're done it's absurd <laughs> well bears currently way down yeah, 15, yeah, yeah. Down. 16 Bottom. is right the way up. 16 is the line yeah, very top heavy uh -huh. in yeah, the nfc yeah. it's insane it's wild dude and if you're a good team i guess like if you have a good roster and you've shown flashes of being great you, the mission you have to be selling in your house is like, hey, we can go do this. We got it. The guy, hey, we got the team here. I don't know if you look around the NFL, there was undefeated seasons being talked about going in, and that is just not the case at all. Like, there has to be so much hope and optimism in so many buildings mm -hmm. that are normally probably gone at this point, AJ. Or everyone. I, I feel like a lot of people said, oh, what, who's going to beat the Bucks? They're going undefeated. Who's going to beat the Chiefs? Like, people were saying they're both going undefeated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that and has not happened like, at all. No. <laughs> That's pretty difficult to go undefeated, especially when you're well. thinking 17 games. I don't know. I've I've heard the pundits on TV say players and coaches, they're trying to, like, pack it in for the long haul and almost conserve energy, and somehow in their brain they're not putting it all out there because they do know they have 17 games. I don't know if that's actually sure. a thing, really? but who knows? It's you weird. tell me, AJ. You actually played. Play no, I, don't think that, I don't think that's the case. So, for instance, the reason why I think that metaphor might make sense and that might, you know – go as a sellable option for what players are doing and maybe not playing their best is anybody that's ever been through a conditioning period knows that the number one question before the conditioning <laughs> period is, hey, what do we got? Mm -hmm. What do we got? And you, I was very lucky that I would always go in the afternoon workouts. It was hotter than in the summer. You're in the afternoon. But at least you know what you're getting because the morning crew already went through blind. They were Christopher Columbus going in there. <laughs> they had no clue what they it were It makes getting. a big difference, too. It's a, oh. huge, it's a huge thing if you just know what your final number is. Oh, my God. I need that final. I cannot not have that final number because just like what they're talking about, I am storing. I am. I'm coming through. If this is 12 seconds, I'm coming. Coming in 11 and a half every single time because I have to do that to make it through. But those, you know, the trailblazers in the morning that just go in there blind, I, I didn't, I was so befuddled by these humans. Like, can you not go in the afternoon? Oh, it's too hot. Okay, it's hot anyways. But you're going in there. You might run 20 hundreds today. Mm. I, I don't even know how you sleep the night before that. I, I, you, so I could see how... People potentially think you store energy for a long haul. Like, I, I completely get that. But there's no way that guys are going into games going, you know what, today, only going to hit with my left arm because I got to get through or only going <laughs> to only finish some plays. Like, that can't actually happen, can it, AJ? You would know a lot better than me. That can't actually happen or take place, right? No, I think once you start the game, it's a game. There's no, you can't half-ass football. Like, you'll get yeah. killed. So yeah. that's the thing. You maybe in practice though, maybe your preparation is maybe guys it's they're lax because they feel like they have more time. They got to find you know I got to take care of my body. I'm not going to get as many reps and during the week. Maybe that's a thing, but I I still don't see it being a huge deal. You're saying a couple more G days uh, G days taking place. You know um, maybe I mean that's up to the coaches though if you want to allow that. It's wild. Well, I just don't know how people would be conserving energy, but I can see how the long season will affect. And Tom Brady had a. 
a quote on Let's Go. He was like, guys struggle to get to 16 games. Like a lot of guys. And if you're not in the locker room, you don't know all of the players. Like there's been how many guys on the Titans? 90? 80. 80. 80 there's yeah. been 80 active players thus far on the Tennessee Titans. I would like to go ask any random fan, any random Tennessee Titan fan, hey, start naming players that play yeah, for the yeah. Titans. You're going to get through 15, 20, maybe a great, great fan, 25 of them. The amount of people that come to the team and our special teamers get hurt, roll your ankle, they end up on IR, you don't even really hear or they get cut or a medical agreement is set. I mean, it is the amount of people that don't make it 16 games. The only time you find out about it is when it's superstars. And that's basically what Tom Brady was saying. Like, hey, a lot of people can't even make it through 16. It is a struggle to get there. And then playoff games are just like, how do we tape the car back together to get through this game where it's win or go home? And then for the next week, let's do it again. Here we go. I don't know if people are prepping for that in-game situations, but I can see how the long season will affect things. I just don't know if – I don't know how people would do that, especially in a game where you can get got bad. You can get – You, you, you can't, got. like, actively conserve energy. Like, that's – like, in a game or even practice, you're not – I don't – I don't know. And, and if your coach thinks you're not practicing as hard as you normally would, then obviously that's on the coach. What is it? You're either coaching or you're allowing it. Is that JB? Yeah, because yeah, you're, you're right. fucking allowing it. Goddamn right. <laughs> that's what a great a, point. I try to think about that. I'm like, man, that's yeah, that's a good point. You got to really stay on these guys. When did he say that? He, oh, whenever you're coaching uh, your daughter's basketball team? Uh-huh. Uh, like, yeah, hey, yeah. We slap the fucking floor. <laughs> now. Yeah. All right? When he don't slap the floor, that means you don't have zero respect for anything I'm saying. We're slapping the floor. I'm, I will not allow <laughs> You not to slap the floor. You you got slap? We slapping? Yeah, we actually haven't worked on any basketball just because I'm working on that with them. Little stupid Good, things smart. like that. Hey, Good. don't drop the ball when I'm speaking. So they just run suicides the whole time. Good. Smart. 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 And tell their shoes to stop squeaking. Yeah. 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 <laughs> trying Carter. to coach you. Got to crawl before you can walk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, one real quick, though. The Tom Brady thing looks awesome. Looks amazing. Watch the whole trailer and all that. I can't wait. How... Who is that person on the ad, on the actual final screen when they pop up? Yeah, I don't. Is that I, Tom Brady? I thought that was like when they put a commercial or a movie that's together Brady. and it's just bland human. Yeah. I thought that's what it was, you know, because there's no logos on the jersey, obviously. Nope. None at all on the jersey. But you're right. The photo, I was also like, oh, did they try to draw him? Did they try to make it like <laughs> a movie? Is the this video like footage <laughs> was so good. It was put together so well. And oh, then yeah. this popped up. I'm like, oh, no, this like takes credibility away from it. Is it a motion graphic? Are they trying to make like a movie? Is it a reenactment? Is it an NFT maybe? That's Tom. Oh, maybe it is Tom's NFT. It, we get that it is. We know that that. That's supposed to be Tom. No, that is Tom. Can you zoom in a little bit on that, Zeke? Can we please? Huh. That's him. I don't know. That does kind of almost look like a CGI rendering. That's what, did no. they not cartoon him a little bit? If they, they cartooned him, they would have left the butt chin out for sure. It's still there right oh. there. You can see it. Jeez, what is your I'm deal? just saying, that's that's the telltale sign. No, they know that's his calling card. They can't take that out. I don't know oh, if the yeah. eyes are googly enough. All uh, right, it was fascinating, though, that this was the decision for the, the cover. And I do appreciate that that is the only thing that stuck with you. For the entire thing, because the cover's terrible. It's distracting. I don't want to watch this, uh, it. It kind of reminds me of um, the what, the Hernandez doc when they had the oh, motion geez. photos. Say AJ. That's what it reminds See, me of the motion the photos hands? and the background stays still, but the motion of the yeah. That's what that reminds me of. Yeah, like this is moving. Almost. Yes, yeah. That, it, yeah, it feels like that's a big part of the intro, and that just took the screenshot from it. Maybe. I mean, I'm excited. Hey, good eye. See, maybe Z. Good job, Z. Top ten tight end, by the way. On the field. On the field. Yeah. <laughs> Off field. Wait, who are we oh, talking about? Top ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's who we're talking about. Algie Crumpler. No. Oh, he was a yeah, baller. He's he's a beast. Yeah. Hey, yeah. he used to maul folks. Oh yeah, uh, Dirty Stop Bird, legend. Oh, Algernon. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Algernon. That's his name. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Let's go, Algernon. Hey, not hey, boy, not talking about Algernon. Those Hernandez documentaries, I think there's another one coming out. Oh, yeah. Either that oh, or yeah. they're they're reshuffling, like they're pushing it back up on Netflix because I'm seeing it on like its own bar now. But I think it's the same doc. It is the one that we watched. I think so. <laughs> yeah. It's unbelievable that happened. <laughs> yeah. That that was real. It's a guy in the kitchen. Uh -huh. Yeah, cooking, making bacon, bacon. <laughs> in his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm painting. Bob you didn't like Ross that paint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was the uh, friend's dad. The friend's dad. Cooking bacon. Oh, that moved in, you mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's a, it's, oh, man. It like, gets depressing, that whole story. Oh, everything yeah. about it. Very. Hey, you want to hear another story? That is why, I, I mean, 
it's definitely depressing for somebody. Wild stories and sports that'll be made into movies and talked about forever, like that. Can't wait to see Man in the re- Arena for much different reasons, obviously. Have have you heard the update on this PSG women's <laughs> oh, soccer geez. scandal? Unbelievable. Do you remember we were oh, the girl that hi- the Tanya Harding situation? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, so fast, my friend. Allegedly, initial reports of a Tanya Harding situation, a hire to remove starter so I can rise to superstardom and become my is allegedly at this point more information has unfolded. All fabricated. This was not the back. It's a Shefty, a Shefty deal. No, oh. well, no, so we don't know if Shefty's involved or not. But new information points to Eric Abadal's wife being the one responsible for ordering the attack on PSG footballer Kira Hamrau. Nailed it. It was allegedly revenge for sleeping with Abidal oh. while he was Bartha's sporting director and Hamrau played for Bartha. Wow. So. This was not the backup trying to become the starter, which was initially reported and we fabricated. Now, or fabricated. Now it's allegedly a little bit of a, a little bit of fuck me, no fuck you. Yeah. How did this get out then? How did the Tanya Harding Can't. situation get out? Because I think that was just automatically assumed. They right? uh, they report. brought in. So she was in the car with the girl who they initially said was the one who like did the attack. So they brought her in for questioning and I think detained her because I, I saw a quote from the. Her uh, and she basically said like I have no idea why I'm here. I had nothing to do with this. Like so the the other lady did Galuli her, but like the, her teammate who was in involved uh, initially, she went into the police station and everything and was detained and had nothing to do. With so that. this gets the the plot thickens, you know. And this might have been ten years ago. Who knows how long ago this was when uh, Abidal slept uh-huh. with uh, Hamarui. Uh, yeah, I, you know we don't know. We'll keep an eye to this, but I know movies are going to be made about this entire situation. When are people going to learn? You can't dip your pen in the company ink. Right. I've never heard that. Well, he came. He comes from the corporate. Mm-hmm. He comes from the corporate. Well, he yep. was he was a cube monkey there for a long it's time. Gospel, where I come from. Yeah, the way it happened too. They dragged this girl out of her car yeah. and like started. So the wife, lead pipe. the wife was very frustrated. Uh-huh. Wait, yeah. did the wife do it? This wife hired somebody. Hired, hired, hired and this is Look, years later. I think right. If what I'm, did they? Did they like beat her with a bat? Honestly, what yeah, they, yeah, metal pipes. They dragged her out of the car and beat her the hell in front of the backup who was detained. Yes. for doing this whole thing. So think about the backup that's like, oh my god, oh my yeah. god, and then all of a sudden you're arrested, you're in jail in Paris for it. It's like, what the fuck? The wife probably floated that out there. I would imagine the oh. wife would say, oh, oh, it, was oh. it was her. And they like searched through Abby Doll's phone. And he had or called her or received a call from her that morning before the attack. See, this is like Cam Newton saying that you couldn't make up a lie this good. Mm -hmm. This is the type of stuff that as soon as you see it, it's like, how is this real life? Yeah. Just like the her name, like how how is that a real thing that's going on? How does he have enough time there? (laughs) 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 Oh, that's the friend's dad. Yeah, yeah. 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 He he cut promos for three hours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's go to uh, five hundred. The quarterback kid, right? Yeah, yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Mr. Yeah. Sansusi. Yeah, Sansusi. 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 There it is. Gabagool. <clears throat> Gabagool. Yeah. Let's go to the phones here. <laughs> let's go to Chris in Connecticut. Five hundred energy phone line. What's going on, Chris? Speaking of, how's it going, Pat, AJ, and the boys? Hey, things are going How good, doing? good. How are you? Keep. I'm pretty good. I want to talk about uh, what Connor tweeted last night. He said the Chiefs stole the Rams' mojo. That's incorrect. The Titans exposed the Rams. And the Chiefs got their mojo back because Jackson Mahomes was not on the sideline. Okay, Chris, a lot of similar thoughts in this office yeah. alongside. Mm-hmm. Out. The Jackson Mahomes, keep his ass in Arizona. Yep. We're going to play in Las Vegas. Experiment was successful. Big time. Seems like that is something maybe keep doing so the football gods continue to bless you with what you had always been, which is a dominant, electrifying football player. Uh, the football gods are still going through an initiation process with old Jackson Mahomes. That's right. Oh, yeah. They're still gathering intel on Jackson Mahomes. They're still trying to figure out whether or not old buddy still deserves to be blessed. That's right. Mm-hmm. With old old TikTok and on Sean Taylor's number, Jackson Mahomes. Yeah, it was the last straw. That's potentially what is happening. I'm not saying that that is definitely the case. It's not into Daily Stoic, but it is something that should be talked about and acknowledged 
as potentially being real. Is there any way that we can petition the NFL office? You know how they, they have to put out the injury designations? Yes. Like an hour before the game. Yes. We have to know if Jackson's attending the game or not. Because if he is, you can't bet on the Chiefs. And if he's not, Here we go. the Chiefs. Hammer him. Here we go. All of a sudden, those... 15 second long plays are cashing in. That's right. Yes. All of a sudden, Patrick Mahomes is stepping up in the pocket a little bit more comfortable and confident. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they're checking the ball down. It's like, wait a minute, how did the football gods not just go, oh, bless you, son? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, no, Jackson, is that what seems to be happening? Is a very different person. I don't think that should go untalked about. So, shout out to Chris AJ Hawk. I mean, so I don't think we've seen the last of Jackson Mahomes at game. No, no, no. Oh, oh, come on. He'll be there Sunday. The, what do you, the dude's a, an international superstar on there. You I, think he's going to stop? We know it's all about consistency in that game. X Factor went to the Raiders. Uh -huh. Okay. I wonder. <laughs> huh? He's officially, he moved? He's yeah. like officially? Well, there was a new man in underwear at the Chiefs game this weekend looking like a superhero who people thought was potentially a repackaged X Factor. Uh, I'm not sure that was the case. I zoomed in. I did not see <laughs> as much similarity as everything else. But if Jackson is held out of the Chiefs fan base until further notice, I don't think anybody would hold it against him. I don't, I don't think anybody would hold it against him. It's the best for the team. He, I don't think there's anybody on his side, is there? No. no. Can't be. Because that Kelsey TikTokers, right? right? His, the people that follow him, I'm guessing, are on his side. Are they? I don't know. Uh, the other I, super fans turned on him. I know that. The, yeah. A lot of young kids Jackson? that don't care about football, though, I think, that follow him. All the super fans turned on Jackson yeah. Mahomes? Yeah. <laughs> the X Factor and Red Extreme and that? Yeah. Before X Factor was. And they led the pack. Yeah, he said, hey, Jackson came. The Jets him. guy? The Jets guy? Fireman, 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 Fireman Ed? Ed? Yeah. He's yep. dead. Oh. oh. That's what he does, I think. Oh. Yeah. Didn't he? J E T S Jets Jets Jets. Oh. Isn't that what he does? I think oh, yeah. I'm trying to remember because I, I think does. he was there one of the games I was there, mm -hmm. and then it, then he was retired for one of the games I wasn't. So I yeah. I don't remember which one it was, but I think that's what it was. What were you going to say, Gumpy, about old old uh, Fireman Ed? I just thought he quit on the team for no, a few years. He did. Well, I did. He did. He did. He's fed up. He did. Uh -oh. he did. Fireman Ed said, I can't even go to the fucking firehouse without being asked about this sorry sap of an organization. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm, telling, I'm just trying to save lives out here. I run towards fires instead of away from fires, and all I'm being asked about is the dumpster fire that is run by fucking Woody Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm done with it. You guys put me on national television every single time there's a primetime game. Let's go find Fireman Ed. You have made me the pseudo mascot of this fucking team. <laughs> uh -huh. I would like a little bit of better say. When, when we're choosing to run the ball, when we're choosing to throw the ball, who we're, who we're deciding to run the team, I would like a little bit more to say. And they said, uh, excuse me, Fireman Ed, go fight fire, stay the fuck out of here. He said, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not coming back ever again. It's nice to see he is back on good terms with the Jets, but I can see how Fireman Ed was potentially fed up with the bullshits out there. Yeah, he was done for a while. I do believe Dave Sala, Bob's brother, was the one okay. who ended up bringing him back. This is awesome. Hey, Wait, really? Really? Let, uh, we're not going to talk about this. I think one of uh, Bob Sala's brothers is a fireman. Uh, or there was something uh -huh. in the, whatever the case. But there is a Bob Sala brother in the news right now. And I fucking love it. Rex Ryan, talking about Jets head coach Bob Sala, says uh, basically that he stinks. Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. He, he's basically saying, stop comparing him to me. We are two very different coaches, different records, different everything, different energy. That's kind of what Rex Ryan said. David Sala, who is the brother of Bob Sala, we did our Twitter research. These two, David and Bob Sala, have sat down with the future owner of the Jets, Gary V. Yep. Wow. Both liked the tweet, both were added in the tweet. So this is Bob Sala's brother, David Sala, saying Rex Ryan took over a good man, Genie Roster. He won with it the first two years and lost with his own roster every year after. The only person making comparisons is you, Rex, in an effort to stay relevant. Stick to podiatry oh. and eating cheeseburgers. Oh. Come on. oh my God. Hey, this is off. This is this is I love it. this is off the top rope. I mean, they're all the way up. This is Dave Sala in the Sala family. This motherfucker, Rex. <laughs> That's a, enough of this. We never see this happen, especially with head coaches in the NFL ever clapping back at any media members. And Dave Sala said, I, 
I'll fucking do it. <laughs> hey, Rex, fuck off, pal. I love it. I enjoy it. Bob Sala yesterday said he knows where my office is. He wants to come down. He can fucking run into the Sala buzzsaw as well. Hell yeah. <laughs> but I will say this. Rex Ryan, Rob Ryan, Ryan family. They grew up playing hockey. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That is a fight I'd like to see Triller put together. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Rex and Rob. Ooh. Bob and Dave. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Put that thing in there. I want to see it. But I, I like that this is happening. I enjoy people saying, hey, fuck you. I, I, like, I like that a lot, that Dave's sticking up for him. I assume Rex enjoys this as well as somebody who loves yeah. the give and take. What a moment, though. I'm surprised it's taking this long for somebody's brother to dunk on somebody so hard publicly. Well, the funny thing is, so Rex went on some other radio show and made those comments about Sala, not on his ESPN show that he had on the morning. And then Sala responded. Now, Dave response to Rex and I love that he puts the podiatry joke in there too he's got to always slip something in about the feet well I, I as soon as I read it I knew that was going to be the only thing you take out of it <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought it was a it was uh, yeah it was worded very well I, I thought by the way I think the fact that he said that even more so is why I love it so much like hey that is a real that's not like, oh, your coaching stinks. You know, that's like... Uh, no, stick to eating cheeseburgers. Hey, if you, hey, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. you want to get into this, pal, we can get into yeah. this. Yeah. 240 characters at a time. Uh-huh. Hey, Dave Sala doesn't fuck around. No, he's he's about that action. I love Rex Ryan. That's why I think I love this so much. ESPN should love this because they're going to, are aren't they going to meet up at the Super Bowl probably when old Bob is coming on the show? Oh, this oh, is yeah. like the Baker yeah. uh -huh. yep. Super Bowl Same thing. Where, Greeny, Jets fan. Where Baker passive aggressively just, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, just littered the interview and conversation with so many things that got, I assume Dave Sala would do the same, but whatever the case, the Jets do seem to be dead again. Yep. Yeah, Mike White, good run. He should have been first overall. That's yeah. right. He, that's what he said. He might still be a guy. Yeah. You don't know. Of you course, can't say no. that and throw four picks, though, right after it. That's what I'm saying. The way it was being handled, I just found it not necessarily out of pocket, but close. Do like, you, close. Do you like, think one game, one drive, which was incredible. Oh, both of those. Incredible. Game yeah. and drive. Absolutely incredible. I saw it firsthand at the Colts game. But the, the way it was being talked about in New York is like, we got a guy, he's our savior, his name's getting chanted in the locker room. And then it, it, because it took over an entire like three-week span, I think the amount of hype that got behind it was huge. And then him kind of adding to it, yeah. I was like, holy shit, I didn't expect yeah. this. And I actually liked his moxie. I'm like, okay, I, yeah. like, I like this going to happen. But I feel like he's going to run into the same problems that potentially every quarterback does whenever they're trying to learn the NFL. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it, it almost isn't his fault, but the entire situation got gassed up to like a point where... Like, Hyped. Yeah, and then, you know, he's like, okay, maybe I am that fucking dude. I should have been... Well, he has to there. believe that he is. <laughs> exactly, uh -huh. exactly. But I think he probably did just, you know, get a little too big for his britches. A lot of talk about the Jets on this particular day, and that's because Dave Sala, if he's going to continue to dunk on media folks... Yep. Oh. I love it. Hell yeah. I, I just don't want to accidentally say something bad about the Jets and Bob Sala here, and then I'm on the receiving end of a Dave Sala. <laughs> no. yeah. We've always yeah. been big Bob Sala fans. We know he's a savage. The entire organization stinks. Stinks, yes. Not his fault. No, we no. want Bob to be Bob, actually. I feel like that's always been a message. Yeah, it was only once. Yeah. The thing about Bob, spelled the same way forward as it is backwards. Shit. It's interesting. Palindrome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nice. Go hang a salami. I'm a lasagna hawk. Boom. <laughs> Another one. Let's get a break. <laughs> Race car. NASCAR. Race car. Close. Hey, it's all right. Fire time. truck. Yeah, it's all right. Dad. Time. Dad. No, that's not Dad. it. Dad. Dad. Mom. 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 Yeah, there's a lot okay. out there. But go hang a salami. I'm a lasagna hog. It does check out. Go ahead and do that. Well, let's get to a break. Um, we will be back in four minutes. There's some other stuff happening around the NFL that I can't wait to get A.J. Hawk's take on. Oh, yeah. The fact that the, the Vrabes-led Titans, the Vrabes-led Titans are so good. 20 people on IR, over 80 players. How has that happened? Is it Vrabes is just a master motivator? Is that what it is? How about down there with, uh, look at that shit. Insane. Jeez. That's, that's insane. Great graphic, dirt. I got hey, hey, hey. head in the background, too. I like it. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Vrabels? Yeah, yeah you see him in the back. Behind the dress. Yeah, sorry, eyes, sorry. I was talking directly to Zito. Uh -huh. You guys heard my inside voice go to my outside yeah. voice. We're looking at the screen on the far side there to my left, your right, the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. Uh -huh. And then the big-ass head behind this team that's the head coach for the Titans, all-time leading sack getter for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Wow. 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 Oh, 
Yeah, Brave's a legend, man. Absolutely. I want to one of your little cult parties. You can't even give me an I.O. for that. I feel like you I didn't even hear you. I thought you were going to break. My bad. Yeah, I bet. Oh, H! Nah, man, you know. You know you got one. I dig your one. We don't do sarcastic. We don't do sarcastic cheers here. Listen! Sarcastic, dude. Whose rules are those? Uncle Wexy's? I don't know about you, but I... You told me about a dude that did that on stage to the full stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. We're back in four minutes. Can you imagine that? <laughs> AJ versus Foxy this weekend. Yeah, we're, we're chanting go green, Pat. Don't worry about OH, all right? Go green. All right, let's get to a break. Oh. Let's go there. <laughs> back in four. Uh, more to talk about, I assume. Good. I think we have potentially introduced people to the people of Pittsburgh, and I think a lot of people have potentially taken liking to more things out of Pittsburgh because of it, and for that, incredibly honored to be a part of. With that being said, when a video hits the internet like one did yesterday, oh, and a Yinzer is showing off what a Yinzer is like at home, behind closed doors, when being caught on a candid camera, a lot of people immediately tweet us and go, oh, we thought you were lying, Donner, about what Pittsburgh's like. It's like, no, no, Yinzers are electric factory. Uh, Yinzers are hilarious. Yinzers are passionate. And this one particular Yinzer <laughs> took the world by storm yesterday. Go ahead and run this thing. A direct staff to nod. That's my call. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Spread them on to a direct staff to nod. Nausea. Yeah, copper, copper fit knee braces. Well, they're Works hard. What they want to do. They're going to run it right up the middle for zero yards. That's what they're going to do. Zero. Why don't they bring in Watt the fullback? Yeah, they don't need that. They need blocking. He's going to pass. Oh, he's not. What's he back here he's going to pass. No, he's not. He hands it off to that guy with no momentum. That's why. That's why. He did it. He did, he did a slant. Touchdown. Go! Oh, you better pick him up and put him down, motherfucker! <laughs> Slow motherfucker! <laughs> so mad. <laughs> why did he pick him up and put him down? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Dad, he's a receiver. That's a touchdown. Stop! <laughs> That's bullshit, Dad. <laughs> Look at where the guy comes to catch him. How old is this guy? I don't know. 50? It could be 70. It could be 30. See, that's what you do with the slant all the time. It's always <laughs> there. <laughs> all right, so this guy obviously captivated the internet. Uh, epitome of Yinzer at E. Yinzer is the Twitter account. And a lot of people immediately asked us, do you know who this guy is? And I think a lot of people are potentially saying that in jest. We do. <laughs> yeah. That guy's from Plum. Yeah, we, we, we have seen those videos before they went on the internet. He is a beauty. Welcome back to the Pat Max. Oh, Unreal. Oh, yeah. Unreal. Foxy's added some new tools to the arsenal. Hell yeah. A couple transitions. Some new shots to the bag. Wow. I assume we've had access to these for a long time. I've known about them forever. Yeah. <laughs> Why not today? I guess. I mean, you just found out about them, so let's go. Can we hit one more of those? Yeah, things? here we go. We'll go to the boys. Yeah. Whoa! Oh! Oh! Hey, Foxy! Hey, Foxy! Hey, Foxy. Hey, Foxy. Hey. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Those are awesome. Awesome. Unbelievable. Yeah. Hey, one more. Hit one more. Yeah. Do we have yeah. 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 one? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. 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 That one doesn't do anything. Yeah. Oh, no. Fox, is there no, a dissolve no. one? See, this is where pigs get fed, hogs get slaughtered. Oh, we got too many. Right. That's right. We had that's a good right. run on three or four transitions. We tried to reach into five or six, mm -hmm. and we just didn't have them in the pack. <laughs> Bucket ran dry. Bucket. Keep working over there. Yeah, the well ran dry. That is 100% case. Yeah. Some more water. Yeah, we need to call them in maybe next week. We'll find some new ones in there. But we appreciate you for joining us. It is this show, by the way, that we'll be talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The show that you just watched right there. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here at Aaron Rodgers, Tuesday, yeah. November 16th. 
Aaron Rodgers will be joining us in about 15 minutes or so. Hell yeah. Hey, that's going to be a good conversation. They're going to be judging all around the world. Hell oh, yeah. yeah. You know what they care about? What's, What's that? that? What happened to his toe? Oh, yeah, true. I hope they care about that. AJ, what happened to his toe? I don't know. What do you mean? He was fine. No, nah, he was on the injury report. He came back yeah. from quarantine. He fucking had a bad toe. What mm -hmm. could he have possibly done? The internet had a lot of ideas on how that happened. I, I can't wait to ask and see if he's okay. Do you think he potentially going up to pee and just stumped, stumped it? Boom! A broke it's a big it, maybe. baseball player move. What's that? They're always getting hurt at home, like tying their shoes or something. Athletes, mm -hmm. baseball players. Yeah, one guy got carpal tunnel from Guitar Hero. Tigers player. Is that real? Yeah. He admitted it that? was like in the playoffs yeah. too. That's hey, real. I was thinking the same thing. How, how did this get public? Somebody wanted to ruin his reputation. He was very good too. We needed him. At Guitar Hero. Is this fucking real? What are you yeah. talking about? Wait, he couldn't about? play? He Joel didn't play Zemaya? then? Is it Joel? Oh yeah, Zemaya. Zemaya. He threw gas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Always over 100 miles an hour. He, he couldn't stop playing Guitar uh -huh. Hero? Yes. That he no longer could throw 100 mile an hour in the fucking big leagues? He's our best closer. Carpal tunnel. When the Tigers were actually good, too. Like, this was really important. Hey, when, listen. When you're playing expert. I like fucking picking up the axe as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. All right? But you can't be playing... By the way, I've seen somebody play Guitar Hero at a high level. Even if they have the sound off, you will still hear... Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. ...the pushing of the things. And they are insane. Flat. And this guy who they rest every third day, right? Because he's... <laughs> nah, I mean, if he's a closer, he might be going every night. Mm -hmm. He just couldn't put the Guitar Hero down. He Who's just couldn't it? do it. Hey, I love, I love killing it here on Thunderstruck. Yep. I, I can't stop doing it. Is that real? When you're doing the Tin Roof Tour in Guitar Hero, it is hard to stop when you get on a run. And the guy's hand stopped working? He wasn't able to hold a baseball anymore? Yeah. That's what they say. So this guy played Guitar Hero so much, it ended up being like this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Couldn't throw Hunter anymore. Fucking yeah. killed yeah, the wrist. Detroit Tigers. Yeah, if yeah. I remember right, it was a wrist thing. Yeah. That is the most Detroit thing I've ever heard in my entire life. What a shame you guys had to go through that. And also, yeah. I bet if he can throw gas, a Honda or whatever, mm -hmm. major league guy, think about how good he was at guitar here. Oh, oh, unbelievable. God. Well, he couldn't quit. Don't you think he could have quit before he it got this bad to where he could have still pitched? It's addictive. Well, that's kind of what, that's what we're I'm all saying. kind of mentioning here. Like the... Uh, just couldn't put the axe down, dude. Yeah. Just couldn't. Yeah. I, and they were saying that he was even walking around a clubhouse when he wasn't plugged in. Uh-huh. Practicing. He was. For the next, you know. He, oh, they were? Who, who was saying this? Brandon Inch, yeah. the third baseman, uh -huh. was saying it. Not just him. Jim also, Leland. Actually, yeah, Jim, Jim Leland, Leland was the yeah. coach. Yeah, yeah right, right? <laughs> Jim Leland was smoking cigs and saw this guy with this axe, and he thought it was just like his uh, positive juju thing for pitching it wasn't that it was actually a crippling addiction that would get, lead to him exiting the game yeah, yeah. but jim leland could have never known because the marlboro smoke was getting in his eyes yep. so yeah. much that's right and jim leland also <laughs> self-admittedly loves guitar hero as well yeah it was big in the clubhouse so it's a gift and a curse you know yeah. Brought yeah. the team together it also took one of their best players yeah. out and that's just that's baseball that's baby baseball baby let's get to the phones <laughs> this show <laughs> the old double-edged sword it is mm -hmm. fucking guitar hero dude what if I just one day out of nowhere actually knew how to play guitar? That'd be awesome. What if? What if one day you just all of a sudden <laughs> made the PGA Tour? What if? All right, that one's much more likely than the guitar yeah. one because my fingers don't have the calluses on the tips of yeah, them. Yeah, that's right. Every time I try to, man, what do you mean? Every time I try to just show up, I don't got toughness to do it. All right, I got them on my palms, obviously, forever. Yeah, yeah. Because the palms, fun. the palms, or like the yeah, top of your. You get it, you dude. Have, you you know what he's saying, AJ. Stop being a prick. You understand what I mean, okay? Oh, I've been shaking Aaron a lot of hands. You gotta love yourself, so yeah. Oh, well, Shut oh, up. Oh, uh, easy. I don't know what's going on here, but <laughs> anyways, when people shake my hand, they know, okay? They they know that there has been work done. Was that guy a lumberjack? That's what they always say. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that because there was a couple blue collar offs, I guess. Oh uh, yeah. On the internet, and I. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't even want to get into it because I have a lot of respect, but. Uh, Gumpy got into a blue collar off. Do you know that? That guy was paying ships in Canada for 16 years. Question the wrong blue collar man. <laughs> Sorry, my I got into a blue collar off. These are things that are happening. Anyways, I can't build up the callus on the tips. Can't do it. I can't get through the first. Ah, my fingers hurt. I yeah, can't. Exactly. And that's what you got to do, I guess. You know what I mean? You got to save the fingers for the golf, anyways. Yeah. yeah. Bingo, you can have one, you can't have the other. Exactly. I'm picking up 20 mil from you instead of just being able to walk into any hall at the moon and go, Wish you would stay from that ledge, my friend. Jumper. We Love could it. cut ties with all the lies that we've been living in. And if 
How at the moon is just pianos usually? Oh, no, no, no. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> That's a piano bar. It's a piano bar. I shouldn't have went down on my knees like that. That's you know, pretty, pretty, that was pretty sweet. Well, move, I was though. in the moment though. I was thinking to myself at how at the moon. I just jumped off one of those pianos. Oh. pianos. Remember, remember how mad our moms would get when we get home from gym class and all our, our swooshy <laughs> pants would be all burnt up. The class would be burnt up. Yeah, yeah, from yeah, from around. yeah. Every time. God damn it, I just bought those. <laughs> What do you want me to do? We're playing fucking knee hawk. Yeah. <laughs> what was I supposed to do? Anyways, I'd rather do the golf than that, although that moment would be epic. I'd also like to pick up the fiddle. Oh, yeah. Devil went down to Georgia. You show up at Howl at the Moon, by the way. Hop up on one of those things. You do that. Grab the fiddle. I mean, it is. We know a fiddler. Well, the fiddler actually... Get there in the band. Let's get to a uh, on the roof. Let's get to a break here. Not yeah. anymore, though, right? <laughs> it ties back into earlier, but yeah, yeah I believe it, it does. does. Yeah, believe I'm it trying does. to figure out how it to dance. Does. I know. I believe it does. You know, I feel like a, a lot of my job is <laughs> juggling the toxicity. <laughs> sure. You know, in the inside, in the potential burials. Yeah. That is you brought tough up the fiddle. Deal. You brought it up. No, you did. But I like to give every. You definitely did. No, you I mean, did. you put it into the brains, and then now all of a sudden it's sitting here. No, you did. Anyways, we've got a six minute break, and Aaron Rodgers will be here uh, to save the show. Woo! Read the Daily Stoke before then. We're back. Six. See ya. Why is football the greatest sport on earth? And do you think football is the greatest sport on earth? And why do you like football? That's a really deep question there, Pat. I know. I think I'd get a good answer out of you, though. Like, I, I think you'd be able to talk about it in a way that I think a lot of people haven't because you've been at the pinnacle of it for so damn long and inside of it. And your brain is a pretty fantastic one. We've learned here over the last few weeks, mm -hmm. obviously. Last few weeks, that's it. That's all the time we've learned that. I think it's the greatest sport in the world for one main reason. It is a true team sport where... It is damn near impossible for one person to dominate an entire oh, game. God, right. and if you look at other team sports, uh, uh, basketball with five guys on the court, I think you've seen multiple players over the years. Uh, maybe one player, or maybe one or two players on a squad be able to dominate and win championships. Baseball, you can have a dominant pitcher uh, and win championships. Soccer, you can have a dominant forward and or goalie. That seems to be a little more of a team sport, but you don't have 11 players engaged at the same time on every play. It is truly uh, uh, a sport reliant on every player on the field to do their job in order to be successful. And I think that's why at times, you know, certain star players can get uh, maybe too much credit and, and maybe too much blame on the flip side because it does take so many players at the same time in three phases to win football games. Uh, and I think that's the beauty and the draw of our sport is that something new happens all the time because you are literally dealing with 11 humans on the field at, at one time who all have lives outside of football and there's distractions, there's uh, a reliance on, on coaching, there's a reliance on preparation, there's a reliance on diet and performance. Um, I just think there's so many facets to it that you see something new every single week and I think that's the beauty in our game. Uh, when it comes to the love that I have for it, it's rooted, and I think like any uh, any player who's played for a long time, the, the love is not just about our sport, it's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world, for me, that fills that need and that hole I have like competition. I think we, you know, if players who play for a long time at a high level, you have that uh, need to be satiated. Uh, competitively and, and it's a love of going out there and going against guys and being in an environment where you know that uh, nothing is guaranteed and that's why I, at times I've taken uh, umbrage to people saying that it's easy because it's not easy it's never easy and I think that's the beauty in our game is that you see things new every single week it's never easy and your only thing you're guaranteed is, is the ability to compete. Uh, I love that aspect of it. I love competing. I love going out there 
and harnessing the fear of failure, where I think so many people who maybe don't love football as much, the root of that is is a deep uh, fear of failure, uh, that you might go out there and your best might not be good enough, and that's not okay with you. Whenever you're working on golf, do you still have the same routine that you had whenever you were younger now, or is it much different? And how often do you just go down there and just hit Phil Mickelson flop shots all day? <laughs> but anytime you turn one sideways and you flatten it, you're like, oh, watch this. I'm going to do like Phil Mickelson does. And then you just go out there. Normally, you either blade it, yep. hit it straight up in the air <laughs> to the right, or you somehow get lucky and it goes and everybody's like, oh my God. Incredible shot. Phil Mickelson. Wow. That's what I, that is, that has kind of become, and I remember you hit the one over your head that one time. That was a mind blow from me is is the short game something you've always just been good at or are you good at it because that's all you work like so much on it at all times when i was a kid my dad had a little chipping area in our backyard and putting green and so i would just go out there and hit balls because i couldn't really go to the golf course and all i did was shots inside 30 yards and it got very monotonous to hit the same shot over and over so i'd go behind the avocado tree i'd go uh, back around the, the the other trees and and bushes and rough and so forth and so I, I would get creative as a kid hitting those shots and you kind of learn um you kind of learn a couple of things but what i would say pat is that there's really only way, one way to chip effectively because you're coming in with no coverage on the ball you're coming in with so much loft that the leading edge is coming in first so you have to have your weight forward that's it. You have to have your weight forward and drive the club down into the ground. And most people, when they when they do that, their hands either come back or their weight comes back and the leading edge comes up and blades it. Now, you can kind of flip your hands a little bit if you have a good lie, like if the ball's sitting in the first cut or it's sitting up, but that technique will not work all the time. And so uh, that's why I, I prefer and believe that the technique where you have your weight forward, your hands forward, and you drive the club down to the ground will be consistent every time. So lay that club flat, move that ball off your left toe, get that ball off your front left toe, there you go, and open that face flat and just drive the club down into the ground, the ball will pop up like a gym. I think I'm a scratch golfer. Yeah. Let's go! <laughs> I think, I, I think I, it makes sense, by the way, that your childhood was spent within 30 yards of a green. Um, my childhood was spent kicking a soccer ball off the side of a house. Worked out for me, it's worked out for you much better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show do? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. Hour three of this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, November 16th, 2021. We'll begin immediately following this beat drop right here. Yeah. Joining me on the screen is a all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers and the Centerville Elks in Ohio, uh, Super Bowl champion, college football national champion, A.J. Hall. Toxic Tables here at Boston Connor at Ty Schmidt and one half of the Hammer Don Cowboys at Tone Diggs currently in studio. And the conversation we're about to have is with a man who's the reigning, defending, undisputed MVP of the league. And there is a lot to behold in the mind of this man because there is so many question marks about the hows, the whys, the wheres, and what we should be looking forward to next. Joining us now, a man who just beat the Seattle Seahawks 17 zip in his return oh, yeah. post COVID, the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah! What's up, dude? Howdy, boys. Let's talk about the shirt real quick before we get into anything. I always uh, love your shirt choices and potentially put me in the middle of an absolute, uh, you know, Star Wars situation. But what is this shirt here? What do we got going on? What's cooking here? You know, I thought about rocking uh, my power lift shirt just because I love giving shout outs to power lift. And during COVID, 
I was so thankful to have my rack at the house to be able to work out. Yeah, so hell yeah. yeah. Shout out to Power Lift and Iron Grip Dumbbells. But this is a this is a shirt to one of my favorite bands called Sleeping at Last. Oh, I love them. Fantastic uh, artist does it all. Um, got a lot of music about the uh, planets, oh. planet theme stuff. So I love the cosmos and um, thought I'd rep some Sleeping at Last gear today. Uh, I I love that you do. I love them by the way, and oh, the yeah. fact that they are the universe. And that song Saturn just. Mm -hmm. I mean, whenever I hear them. You know, sing about it. I'm like, wow, this is fucking awesome, dude. Yeah. I'm like, Saturn is is so good. But n nobody wants to hear though about you know song Saturn or two <laughs> or this incredible band here. So let's move along. And and I don't know if I'm the proper person to be interviewing you about that incredible band who <laughs> clearly has just two songs that Zito could find on the internet <laughs> in my ear. Uh, Aaron, and there's a one. Saturn, song. Is, Saturn is a great one. It's probably my favorite by them. So good pull there, Zito. Had a boy Z. Had a boy Z. Thank Zito, you for making me look smart. Um, can we ask a couple questions about this past weekend against Seattle? The answer is yes. We appreciate you for your time. The toe injury. What happened with the toe? Was that at the house while you are by yourself? And how did you test the heart in the cardio to know that you should play on Sunday? Yeah, that was a COVID injury. Um, but as far as the heart, I just had to get back into working out just to see how I was feeling. And uh, day five and six, I had a couple good workouts. Um, and I felt good afterwards, so I wasn't worried about my wind or heart or any of those issues and got checked out, obviously, before I got totally cleared. So, uh, so I felt, uh, felt really good. Shout out to, uh, the hydro as well. Um, I know you're a big rower. That's how you get those big arms and traps, right? Yeah, so, and this back here. You know what I mean? Yeah, and big, back. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hydro to do, uh, some rowing workouts was important. Okay, so what happened to the fucking toe, though? Like, that, that came out of nowhere. The internet was letting a lot of jokes fly. Is that anything to be worried about, or is that just something that kind of popped up out of nowhere? It's a little painful, but uh, I think I'll be okay. I was able to run around a little bit on uh, on Sunday. So so what were you – I mean, I've read somewhere where you and uh, Rogan were smoking DMT over a virtual <laughs> session, and you jammed your toe on something in your house. Is there any truth to that? I read that report as well. <laughs> I can't confirm or deny that. <laughs> uh, okay, so the toe is nothing to worry about going forward, and obviously you were able to play, but it did come out of a quarantine session, so I guess we will just continue to wonder on how that potentially happened. Were you getting out of bed, you stumble, you hit your toe like many of us have, or are you running sprints through the kitchen and, and maybe all of a sudden a stool gets you? Th th these questions are just going to continue to linger as soon as I hurt. By doing a two-minute drill in the backyard. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Is that what happened? Possibly. Possibly. You never know. Was, was I working you... in the greenhouse? I don't know. Oh, doing... <laughs> was it when you broke the huddle all by yourself? And yep. you, when oh. you stood up, you hyperextended it when you were doing the, the <laughs> two-minute drill against nobody? Is that what happened? Uh, no, I can confirm it was not that. Okay. Not not, not a rising from a knee, no. All right, let's talk about the game once you got in there. Happy to hear the toes okay, and I can't wait to hear the incredible reasons on how you got hurt that the internet will continue to create <laughs> alongside the DMT sesh that potentially happened between you and Dr. Joe Rogan. But when you get back into the game and you start playing, did you feel any, you know, rust not being around for 10 days, getting dropped in on a Saturday? We know you were Zooming and you were kind of voice of Godding in situations, but did you feel any rust? Did uh, Seattle do anything you didn't expect? Or how do you feel like the start of that game go? And did you ever get feel back to your normal self? I felt good from the start. I think that uh, their defense uh, wasn't the typical Seattle that we've seen over the years as far as coverage-wise. You know, over the years, playing against Legion of Boom, it was basically one coverage for the most part. Then they mixed in some man here and there and occasionally a little bit of two high, but it was it was mostly the one high uh, three buzz coverage that they played, and they just played it so well. I mean, they were so incredibly um, disciplined in their drops and their responsibilities. It was hard to do anything against them. Uh this defense played some jam front, which was, which was, uh, uh, you know, the, the old Seattle defense that didn't play a lot of jam front, and they played a lot of two shell behind it. Um, basically saying, we're going to stop you with the jam front uh, from running the football, and we're going to play some two shell on the back end. I thought it was, you know, uh, you know, well executed by, uh, by Ken and his defense. I thought they played well. We were just a little bit off, and we had some opportunities. We had a, you know, I had a run early in the first quarter. Uh, to get his first down, uh, kind of deep in the in the red zone, and there's kind of a phantom holding call on Elton, 
uh, that brought us back and put us behind the sticks. And obviously, I threw a pick in the end zone, which took to, took three points off the board. Uh, so we just a little bit off, but we had a couple good drives there in the third and fourth quarter to put the game away. And obviously, our defense plan just unbelievable. It kept us in the game and kept them obviously scoreless. And um, but we were behind. You know, it was a weird game with the possession. We had almost 40 minutes of possession, but a lot of it was because you know we started multiple drives inside the 20. Their punter was doing a really nice job, and and uh, you know we had uh, we had a lot of long fields to go to go down and couldn't put together drives. That ended up in the end zone until the fourth quarter. Shout out Michael Dixon. Shout out. Yeah, hell of a game for him. But wait, what was your Saturday schedule like? Like, do you get in extra early? Like, how, do you have to cram? Like, what was that whole situation like? Getting back with the team? No, not really cram. I just had to get uh, get cleared from the doctors and and go through uh, a workout in front of them, and then I just went right to meetings and, and our normal Saturday walkthrough. And Matt had asked if I wanted to do anything extra. I just felt like I think there's there's a lot to the routine, and I didn't want to mess up everybody's routine just because I was back and hadn't had a chance to practice. So uh, we threw in maybe a couple extra plays during that walkthrough period that I had circled during the week that I wanted to just be able to call out and see, even in a, a slow walkthrough setting, just kind of see the distribution of the guys. And um, so he uh, he allowed uh, you know a few extra plays in that walkthrough period, but but it was a very very typical Saturday other than that. Okay, and. I mean, that was a soccer game through three quarters. I mean, it was three nothing there, and, and that's not a shot at the beautiful game. It was just like it was a cagey affair, as our oh, yeah. Canadian friend Gumpy, who's maybe the greatest soccer handicapper on earth, would call it. And I think it's because of something you alluded to there. Your defense is absurd. What has it been? And granted, you had to miss ten days because Uncle COVID came knocking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're happy you're alive, by the way, and able to play afterwards. And it seemed like not a lot of people really cared about how your health or condition was. We're excited to hear that you're okay and you had no lasting effects. Hopefully, although we don't know shit about fucking this entire thing, we, <laughs> who knows in that. But have you seen the defense grow through the season? Because there were some times early in the year where I think not just uh, fans, but I felt like media, everybody, this Joe, Bar Joe Barry has stunk since forever. How is this the answer? And then all of a sudden this team is stacking up Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson. I mean, have you seen the growth in the defense and there's a couple weapons coming back? What do you think it is? Why do you think they are clicking so well right now? Well, they're playing, they're playing great top to bottom. I think the front's doing a nice job against the run, much like Seattle. And, and you've seen the trend across the league defenses, would love to be able to play two shell and stop the run. And, and, and the teams that can do that are having the most success on, on defense. And, and just like this league is so cyclical, uh, when the running back position a few years ago started to become a little more obsolete to some people in some people's eyes and you had less people, I mean, even still less people rushed for 1,000 yards, more two-back systems, uh, when the league was, was going to predominantly one high defenses, now it's shifted back, and now there's more two-eye defenses. The onus on the run game is as high as it's been in a while, and, mm. and you, have to, you have to be able to run the ball. And if you can't run the ball, then teams are just going to sit back in their, in their too high. And our defense has done a nice job of mixing up coverages, but, but playing too high to be able to stop the pass and stop on the run with a light box. And it's a credit to the interior defensive alignments, to credit to the outside backers setting the edge, credit to our inside backers, um, you know, we've all, I think, played really well. Everybody from Chris Barnes to Warren Burks to obviously the unsung hero of the defense, uh, Devondre Campbell, who's had a fantastic season. You know, he's been all over the place, tackling machine, uh, disrupting passing lanes, um, being a great leader in the locker room. He's been as big of a reason, I think, as, as just about anybody. But the back end has played really solid. To lose a top corner in the league in Jair and lose Kevin for a number of, uh, of weeks and to have – uh, young Stokes, you know, be so consistent as a rookie for us with Sewell Douglas to come in off the street and play so well for us. Um, that's been the greatest thing. And, and I think Adrian and Darnell, our safeties, you know, really done a nice job too. And then you add in uh, the way that Sully has played and slot for us and Henry Black when he's been in there. You know, we've had contributions from a lot of different guys on the back end and they've all, I feel like, been covering really well and playing consistent and then tackling. The tackling, I think, has been has been what was allowed us to, to stop people and get off the field. Hey, when you look around the league, and I know you probably don't study games if you're not playing the teams, but what do you think it is with all this inconsistency with teams? Like the Rams getting blown out last night by the Niners. Yeah, Niners look great, but we expected the Rams to eventually get it going. And you look around, you see the Bucks just lost again. Like, why is it so tough to win 
week in and week out and actually be consistent. Well, it's the league. I mean, that's what they want. It's parity. There's a lot of parity in the league. I think anybody could beat uh, anybody. There's obviously other issues, you know, uh, injuries uh, and uh, and COVID stuff at various times. It's forced teams. You look at Pittsburgh losing, uh, you know, losing Ben to – uh, to COVID and Mason stepping in and then having a back and forth game that goes to overtime and overtime is 10 minutes now and they end up in a tie, um, you know, and, and obviously, uh, you know, Washington playing, uh, playing Tampa tough and you saw it last night. Um, anybody can beat anybody truly. And, and I think the league is, is very wide open. Uh, you had, um, you know, Jacksonville had a big upset a couple weeks Buffalo. ago. Yeah. Uh, it was surprising to a lot of people. Um, some teams match up better against other teams, I think, just based on pure schematics. Um, and then, you know, there's always, uh, I think, uh, things that can crop up, uh, you know, complacency or maybe a, a lack of focus. Or maybe a team just gets hot in a day and a quarterback gets hot or a defense gets hot and schematically things match up and, and you're able to stop somebody. And that's that's kind of league we're in. I mean, Shanahan, I, I saw last night in San Fran, they've beaten – the Rams like a few in a row now, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. He is McVay's kryptonite, it seems like, Shanahan. And, again, they're not calling the game against each other. Shanahan's calling it against defense, and McVay's calling it against <laughs> no, no. You know, defense. But, but they've, you know, they've found a way to, to, to get it done. That's just the league we're in right now. There's a lot of parity. I'd look at them, I mean, you know, when we started the season, it looked like the NFC was the far superior conference. I mean, there's like four or five teams undefeated or had – only one loss in the AFC, everybody had at least one loss, if not two losses. And now you look at it, and I looked at it before this week, I think it was 11 teams in the AFC had a winning record and only six in the, 11 in the AFC, six in the NFC. Um, you know, so that the kind of the, the depth of the AFC is, is kind of proven itself, and the NFC is kind of separating a little bit more than, than the AFC. And I guess, and by the way, you understanding and knowing all that is awesome. I just... I assume that you wouldn't be able to pay attention to the grand scheme of things, but, I mean, you have a massive brain, obviously. That is something that is uh, pretty relevant and evident whenever you stop by here. But let's go back to inconsistencies. After that first game against the Saints, and now you guys are number one, by the way, I think on uh, a lot of different power rankings. Mm -hmm. The Packers, number one team in the NFL. (laughs) Hey, congrats. Hey, congrats, dude. It wasn't like that all the time. You guys are getting dumped on and dunked on a lot of the season, but now I think people are appreciating and respecting the run you're on. What do you think it has been since that first game? Was it just first game? Everything was just kind of out of whack? Or what do you think it is about this team? And you guys got a lot of weeks left now. We're, we're, we're right in the middle of it. There is no light at the end of the tunnel yet. How do you continue to maintain that? And what do you think it has been the change since week one? Well, I think piggybacking off of what I just said, sometimes – schematically things line up perfectly in a game where their offense might schematically have certain plays that line up perfect against the defensive call and vice versa. You might have things that we really like during the week and for whatever reason they mix something up or they hit on a specific call uh, that aligns uh, perfectly to defend what we're trying to do on offense on that play and things happen and it happens in the reverse sometimes you know you make you might make a great call you think and and there's a bust in coverage or a misalignment or something that leaves the guy wide open and, and it leads to you know big plays because big plays are what the game is all about and Hell yeah. week one we just you know we didn't execute very well uh they you know we're not even playing at home we we're playing on a neutral site uh and you know we just had a, a clunker of a game Nothing that we dialed up kind of aligned and we didn't execute very well. And a lot of stuff that they dialed up, you know, they had a third and nine screen that went for, or fourth and fourth and eight screen that went for 20 yards, you know, for a first down. Just things like that happen. And um, since then, I think we've obviously played a lot better football. I think so too. And I know AJ has another question, but I have to follow up with this because after the off season with all the drama around you in your life and every decision you make and the conversation and the, the uh, accruing of information, that was dropped on draft day and everything that happened, we all assumed scorched earth Aaron Rodgers is about to absolutely buzzsaw people. Then that first week happens, it's ugly, uh, the people are getting real loud about you, maybe not having it anymore, not mm-hmm. worth it. Remember, th- these are the things that actually happened. And then obviously since then you've had success. After what happened during the COVID thing, 
Why do you think that that is a, a natural reaction for all of us that are kind of fans of yours to be like, oh, okay, a guy now has another chip on his shoulder, all this. Is there anything to that, you think? And do you recognize that as being a real thing in your world? I think you're based that off of patterns that have happened. So it's not conjecture or <laughs> make-believe. There's been things that have happened and things that have, that have been said. And then the way I've responded uh, either immediately or – uh, through the course of the season has kind of put a lot of that stuff to bed. You know, I think in 2016 when there were a couple of hit pieces out on me, we were four and six, and I said we're going to run the table, and what happened? We won eight straight and went to the NFC championship game. So, there's, you know, uh, we were one and two, and I said everybody needs to relax a little bit. Things are kind of going nuts, and we finished the season, you know, 11 and two or 12 and one or something that year. So, you know, uh, I think there's a history of it. So, I'm not surprised by that, but there's also, a, you know, a, a trend of overreaction that happens um, every Monday. You guys do a segment, I think, don't you? It's a whole yeah. show, yeah. <laughs> three and a half hours, three and a half hours, Aaron. Yeah, three and a half hours. We 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 feed that fire, but do you just write it all down on like the mirror? Is that how you stubbed your toe? Were you writing down all the things that everybody was saying about you, and you want to climb up on the the mirror a little higher? Oh, toe off the wall. Is that what happened? That's basically what happened. Yeah, I was. I had I had my 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 Rocky Balboa room where I got my pictures and <laughs> on the wall and, and all the writings and I you know grab them after I you know take one of them down and toss it to the side. It's nice. I thought so. We all thought so. Yeah. By yeah. that is exactly what we thought happened. It's nice to hear you're relatable. You know what I mean, AJ? Go ahead. Yeah, it's good to know. But hey, with the 17 game season, I talked to Pat earlier. I, I I've seen some people try to say players may be pacing themselves or whatever. They can't see the the light at the end of the tunnel. Do you ever feel that with anybody? Is like your day-to-day -day change or anyone's mindset change with the 17-game season? And also, what are the chances that you're going to be playing in Green Bay next year? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's good journalism. It's a twofer. I uh, yeah, thank you for that too. For that, I find it hard to to imagine anybody's pacing themselves. We're talking about one more game you know we've played 16 games for so many years in a row now one extra game you're talking about you know a, a 6.25 percent increase in playing like i don't think anybody's actually really pacing themselves uh with the extra game now um did he just do that wow did you just do that math in your head right there do you have the uh are you one of those guys like oh let me carry the one. 42 times yeah, yeah they have this cover two defense yeah. right now i've seen this 40 is that you is that real that's real yeah all right yeah. seven uh, times two i've got I do have some good mental math tricks i can do another time another time let's, another time another show <laughs> another show uh let's go another, uh, another show uh age no comment Oh Whoa. shit! Hey, that's hey, they're gonna have to bleep me out of a lot. Of, they're gonna have that's, to good. Bleep that's a good thing. My reaction now. I just wanted to no comment, you age. I just I, I, that's fun for me. Now that you're a media person, now you're a big media guy. Isn't that the first thing they tell you though when they sit you down your rookie year? Don't say no comment. That's what they told us. Yeah, I wasn't part of that conversation. But you are you are a rebel though, so you can say oh, it. Oh, maverick. Here we go. Maverick, there you go. Uh, you guys didn't get introduced. That was a change because I thought the offense was getting introed. Is that a big deal or not at all? Do you do you do you look into that? Should we look into that? I love the intros. Um, I'm not sure who picks who's introed each week, but I'm hoping uh, two weeks it's the offense. Especially after hey, after one COVID game, we're back mm -hmm. in there. We're slinging the pill around. All of a sudden, the cheese head god is. Oh my god, that place will be. It was cold as shit, huh? I saw the long johns you had, and you told us a couple weeks ago. You know that when the leaves start to turn and the weather starts to get a little bit chilly, you get a twinkle in your eye because that's football season. Is it? Did you have the first taste of that this past weekend? And not a lot of people wearing long sleeves. You're not normally like a, I'm wearing long sleeves when it's kind of cold type of guy. Did you regret the long johns? throughout the game or did you think it was accurately worn no i have a I have some strict policies when it's under 50 i wear long sleeves so the last home game it was right at 50 i asked j-lo before the game because he always goes out and he comes back in and tells me like is it cold out there is it windy or whatever you know and he came back in he said yeah it's not that bad i said what's the temperature he said i think it's 50 i was like <laughs> okay, short short sleeves it is but this was i think the temperature was 36 we had some snow flurries we woke up to a winter wonderland outside. It was snow everywhere, and the leaves were off the trees, basically. Um, but 
it wasn't that cold. I mean, when it gets below 20, that's real cold. Um, and you'll know if it feels cold to me if I'm wearing my, my turtleneck. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, wasn't, I wasn't wearing that. And, and you know it's on when that thing is, when that thing is on. But I wasn't, I wasn't wearing it. So it, was, it wasn't that, uh, that cold. We've talked about this, I think, last year. But forgive me for probably forgetting this. And it is a shame because this is something I should know. Is it just because you have massive ham hocks? Is that why the cold weather doesn't affect you at all? It seems like the offense doesn't change. There is, I mean, you, there is... A couple misses, I guess, this weekend, but everybody's going to miss every once in a while. It doesn't seem to affect you ever. It is almost like you are a cold-weather quarterback. What is it? I know you've told us in the past, but I, I don't think I re- – is it just your massive hands that make you better than everybody else? That definitely helps. That definitely helps. you got to have big hands to throw in the cold. Um, the biggest deterrent, though, is is to throwing is first rain and second wind. Yeah. And we usually get a good bit of wind, uh, regardless of the time of year. And that's always the biggest deterrent. Snowfall is not a problem. Cold is not a problem. Um, but it's the wind. And we had the wind was really swirling uh, Sunday. Um, I, you know, every now and then I'll, I'll throw some grass up, uh, like a like yourself, like a golfer will do, to try and get the direction of the wind. And I did it like five or six times because. You can never trust the flags in Lambeau because usually they blow opposite. So if, the, if they're blowing from the north, usually the wind is coming out of the south on the field. Um, and because of the temperature, as I drove in, I could tell it was a north wind. So that would tell you that it usually is going to blow from uh, our tunnel really in more of a kind of a southwesterly uh, direction uh, on the field. But of course. In, the game, in the game, it was blowing kind of all over the place. So... Yeah, there were times where I felt like I was downwind. Uh, I threw a ball to Allen. I thought I was downwind and turned it. I was dead into the wind, and the ball wasn't a great tight spiral and got held up and, and turned out to be a, you know, a PBU where it could have been a big-time play. So there were a few disappointments like that, but that's just playing the Lambo sometimes. It's actually way better than it used to be. When, I'm, when My first year started in 08 before the addition of some of the boxes with, um, with one of their uh, um, uh, sales of uh, – um, what are they they're selling uh, stock. Uh, stock stock they're doing again right now yeah. 90 million is about to be raised right now mm-hmm. by no ownership it's great yeah point. but it was a lot worse in 2008 i mean you never knew when the wind which way the wind was blowing with it when they raised up the stadium and had the extra boxes it actually protects and got the big jumbotrons it protects the wind a little bit more on both sides but it's chilly as hell out there i mean it's a frozen tundra it's uh something that literal stories are told about and it seems to not affect you you're like 82 19 and 1 or 85 19 and 1 at home and you're gonna start your 200th career game coming up this weekend uh the the packers passed the chicago bears for the most home victories in a franchise history of 451 oh, yeah. you've obviously both have been a massive part of that uh it's incredible the way you've been able to handle the elements in your entire career last question before ty has one and ty hey you know ty Accepted to Harvard, big brain uh, Packers owner. I don't know how he feels about the dilution of his stock. <laughs> that just I don't know if you even get asked or signed Not off great. on that entire thing. But uh, the Odell Beckham Jr. thing. He was allegedly potentially coming to the Packers. He liked the Packers. Then there was McVay got on the phone, recruited him to the Rams, and everybody's judging that decision off of one night just a few days after the acquisition there. And we saw photos of you and OBJ uh, at different events and being friends, and obviously you two would get along, I assume, pretty similar like-minded humans. How much did you feel you should be a part of that? Were you a part of that? And did you ever feel like OBJ was going to be a Packer? Well, we've been friends for a long time and, and kept in touch and uh, met him, you know, at some events and, and just, you know, sent encouraging messages, uh, you know, during the seasons over the years. And, um, you know, when when he became free, uh, there was definitely conversations. Um, and I was, you know, in the conversation with him directly. I mean, I obviously have been friends with him, so I didn't need to, you know, get you know, put on the phone by anybody else. I could just get a hold of them directly. But, but there were conversations with the organization as well, and, and I appreciated the fact that we were uh, in the mix. Um, it just comes down to fit, ultimately, and, and what the best fit is for him. And we had some real good, honest conversations, and, and I'm excited for him in, in L.A. I thought that there was, there was definitely some things that lined up, uh, you know, him coming to Green Bay. But ultimately, he took time to decide uh, where he wanted to be, and, and 
and turned out to be LA. So uh, I wouldn't. And again, you know, uh, I wouldn't judge uh, one performance. You know, he he obviously had some plays that he felt good about, um, but he wasn't playing. You know, most of the fourth quarter when they were in no huddle stuff. So obviously, he has some ways to go learn the offense. And I, you know, it's similar offense that, that we run. It's not one you. I feel like you can really jump in at certain positions and just know it right away. There's there's four or five teams that run it, but it's not all over the league, and it, it has different terminology and signals and and splits and alignments. So I would definitely reserve judgment on uh, on right now for uh, OBJ. I think he's got a lot of really productive years left in his career. What about Stafford? People are calling I – mean, I mean, this is obviously not your words, but <laughs> people are using this as a shot at him. They're saying he's Matthew Gofford all of a sudden whoa, whenever he gets whoa. LA and he's lost. People are saying he can't throw anymore. He stinks. They need to bench him. That's that is kind of what your point is about everything, though. I guess those are trash comments. I mean, I'm a huge Stafford fan. I have been for a long time. We played against him so many years. One of the most gifted throwers of the football, uh, definitely in my generation, and, and I put him up there, you know, with some of the most gifted guys that ever throw the football. Um, you know, I'm a fan. He's he's a tough dude. He's played through some crazy injuries. I mean, he played in Detroit all those years. You got to be a base level of uh, mental fortitude already. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, I'm a yeah, I'm a big fan, and he's had a nice, a really nice season. I mean, they're seven and three. Um, he's he's played really well. First year in the system, so I'm not here for any Matthew Stafford trash. Slander, now. yeah, not us neither. Aaron Hayer here, pal. Go ahead, Ty. Aaron, glad you're healthy. It was nice seeing you back on the field. Uh, a lot of people were talking about Jamal Adams getting the pick and then mocking you doing the belt. Uh, and we all know anytime someone does that, you guys ultimately end up just kicking their ass. Is that something you do like before the game? Do you tell guys like, hey, if you if you pick me off like and do the belt, I'll throw a football through your chest? Or is it one of those things where it's just like, you know, because you throw so few of them that shit like that's going to happen and it's just kind of like whatever? I didn't see him do it, but there hasn't been a lot of positive things that have come <laughs> from guys doing it over the years. I mean, I think the you know the boys can put together some some mock up to those some of those things, but there hasn't been a lot of positives that have come away from guys guys mocking the belt over the years. That was a gift that I told him later in the game, an absolute early Christmas present. <laughs> uh, you know, on that one. A bad decision, uh, and obviously didn't throw it anywhere where I <laughs> near where I wanted to throw it. So, um, look, you know, there's been guys who've made some good picks over the years, uh, like good playing the ball or baiting me, or you know, it hasn't been a, a ton of guys, but but those I, I really you know respect. And most of those guys, you know, I tell them after the game or during the game, hey man, great play, you know, like I, I have respect for that, um, and I respect Jamal. I mean, he's a hell of a player. But that wasn't necessarily the most difficult one. I kind of threw it right to him. <laughs> so you have a <laughs> – hey, listen, Jamal, if you're going to do the belt, please, at least make it on a play that I didn't just give it to you. All right, at least at least earn that thing. But that is going on the mantle. This was a pickoff of Aaron Rodgers. There's Some ratio was shown on the screen about uh, touchdowns to interceptions, I think, and you have the highest at 4.7 or something like I forget what it is in history. Why is that? Has it just been ingrained in your body not to turn – the ball is the program? Or or do you think it's because of your accuracy, or what do you think it is that there are some guys that just are turnover parties, and for whatever reason, throughout your entire very long career, you have not been at all? Well, I think a lot of it is just the mindset. Um, a lot of it is scars too. You know, when I was a young player, coming up the ranks in high school and, and junior college and at Cal, it was kind of understood. You know, I was in quarterback competitions, and you take care of the football, you're going to keep playing. You turn the ball over, you're going to be sitting on the sidelines watching. So uh, that was always kind of ingrained in me. The other part is the more accurate you are, the, and the more the less opportunities you have for some of those, um, you know, ones that uh, that, that uh, get away. You know, I think decision making is all about the highest percentage possibility of a positive play oh. occurring throw, and that goes into my mindset. That goes into my preparation. That goes into the pre-snap and the and the walk to the line of scrimmage and the at the snap reads. Um, and then obviously the post snap is all about uh, the proper read and the, and the proper delivery of the football. Now there's things that are out of your control, you know, drops, uh, deflections, guys falling down. Um, but the ones you can help based on ball placement and accuracy, um, I think that's allowed me to, to limit those over the years. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds good in theory, but every coach tells the quarterback, hey, we can't turn the ball over, we can't throw interceptions. Like, what do you think you can do, you do that separates you? Because everyone's trying to not throw picks. Is it your preparation? Is it your in game? Like, how everything slows down? Like, what do you think it could be? And can he turn it off? You know, or some, <laughs> can he turn that off? You think some guys, can they turn it off? I mean, I think there's different points where you get more aggressive for sure. I mean, in tight games in two minute in the fourth quarter, uh, you might, uh, you know, a lower percentage, uh, um, you know, situation, you might try and fit a ball in certain spots where early in the game, you might just check it down and move on down the road. If you need a chunk play at certain times, you might try and throw one up. Uh, and in various points during the game, you might be having a great game and it'd be in the fourth quarter and you might try and throw a, you know, 30, 70 ball or a 10, 90 ball. Um, and it turned out good. I saw Pat do it the other night at Sunday football, you know, he got outside the pocket and threw it up to, uh, running back guy made a great catch in the end zone for I think his fifth touchdown that sometimes you get in that mo- ro- uh, mindset where you're like hey it's my night tonight nothing's gonna go wrong I can I can put the ball just about anywhere I want and something good's gonna happen it's gonna either be a catch or or an incompletion so it just depends on the mindset in the, in the moment but I think for the most part when you're locked in you're throwing high percentage uh, throws and even tight window stuff can can be high percentage in your mind based on the leverage and the the defender's uh, position and who you're thrown to a lot of times too. Hey, what point do you think you find out that you're in it? Like you can control, the, is it in the game? Is it in warmups? Oh, you know what? It feels like this ball is going to go wherever the fuck I want it to go. <laughs> is that in the game and warmups? Do you go into it? Do you start feeling that you're kind of in it? It's like, all right, let's start going. And do you let LaFleur know? Does LaFleur naturally know? Do you, have you looked into deeper into that zone that you feel like I'm completing every single ball today? Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's a there's a long answer to that. I'll give you maybe a medium answer. Um, Take a medium for a... <laughs> sometimes. So, not media. I'll give you a medium answer, medium length answer. Uh, uh, medium fry. Yeah, I'll take a medium fry and a sprite, please. Yeah, thank you. I could get super sized version. I assume it's way over my head, though. Thank you, Aaron. Right. Take... <laughs> You're a big Sonic guy, aren't you? Or you Chick Fil A? Oh, I do fuck with some Chick Fil A. Mm. I spicy chicken. Oh. <gasps> oh. I need to be more healthy, though. But that could be a supersized answer or a medium answer. We don't need to get to that now. The zone we should get back to, though, because we're watching Tom's man in the arena tonight. And I, I enjoy, like, learning why people that are at a different level than everybody else are at a different level than everybody else. Like, And you are obviously one of those dudes. There's not a lot of you guys out there, which is pretty sweet. And I just wonder, like, do you know you're in a zone? And when is Is it going into the game? Is it while it's happening? Do you make one throw? And you're like, holy shit, okay, here we go. Maybe tonight's a little different. Yeah, sometimes that's the case. I mean, sometimes you, you maybe you're not feeling it pregame, and, and the ball doesn't feel great coming off, and you make a couple of throws early on. And you go, "Whoa, okay, I'm I'm in it now. I'm, th- this thing is is really jumping off your hand, or it's right where you want to put it every time." Sometimes it's during the week in practice, you have the, some of those special weeks. You're like, "Man, this has been a great week. Everything is coming together. My footwork's tying with my the routes, and the ball's coming off good, and I'm using good eye discipline, and everything's just kind of in in, in a line." Sometimes it's moments in a game. They can last the whole game. Sometimes it's just little stretches where you really feel like you're dialed in. But the key is is that flow state. You know, the flow state that's talked about so much, uh, you know, with the mindset and the ability to stay in the moment and and, uh, and have things, you know, be slow all around you and be able to, uh, uh, you know, think very quickly and, and make a bunch of deduct- deductions in a short amount of time. Be here now, exactly. Um so, yeah, sometimes it could be during the week, sometimes on game day. Sometimes you feel incredible during the week and you get out there and you can't, you know, you can't put the ball anywhere you want it. But uh, most of the time it's, uh, it's close to that flow state, I'd say. Tom Diggs has a question for you. Aaron, obviously you played fine with the toe injury, but Russ, it was reported that he rehabbed 28 hours a day on yeah. his finger injury. Did you happen to get a chance to ask him how that's possible and potentially what you could do to fix your toe? And did you do the same with COVID? I didn't get a chance to ask him about that, but he definitely came back from uh, from that uh, quickly. Uh, I've had a couple finger injuries over the years, and it's it definitely makes throwing the ball tougher. It makes throwing the ball in the cold a lot tougher. Um, so I definitely uh, definitely knew that was going to be uh, uh, you know a grind for him getting through that game, 36 degrees with the finger and and, and the cold. All right. Well, uh, before we get to the book club, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. You chopped the top off, huh? Then you took you took it off. You cut the hair? You got a haircut right now? Do we have a new haircut right now? 
No, man, I still got the flow. Oh, you got it up there in like the uh, okay. up in the toboggan upper. No, it's just, it's down here. Oh! It's not going anywhere, man. Oh, really? We're keeping that going in the flow state. We're gonna keep that thing rolling. Yeah, that's what Ram Dass says, man. Just don't <laughs> cut your hair. Oh yeah, I love it. I love it. I didn't even know Ram Dass existed. Rest in peace to Ram Dass and, and Sun Tzu. But now it is time for my favorite moment in the history of books. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the 11th installment of the book club that has captivated the globe. Drum roll, please. Ladies and gentlemen, first it was The Alchemist, then there was a bunch of books about really good stuff. Then The Power of Now, which makes you focus on the time that is now, and maybe enjoying the universe that is right now, and then The Outliers. Why are the greats the great? And then last week it was The Daily Stoic, and although I've only been able to read seven pages of that 365, maybe leap year 366 uh, page book, I can't wait to find out what is installment number 11 of the Aaron Rodgers book club. I'm going to tone this see down and see if we can see this good. Fingerprints of the gods. Can you see that? Oh, Graham Hancock. Of course. Of course, Graham. Graham Hancock, archaeologist, fascinating human being. He tracked down the Ark of the Covenant. Um, but this is uh, an amazing book. Anybody who loves history, um, uh, Learning about lost civilizations, Egypt, aliens. But I'm a big Graham Hancock <laughs> fan. I uh, I heard about him uh, on the JRE, uh, Dr. Joe Rogan, <laughs> his podcast, uh, the Joe Rogan Experience, and I've seen all of his episodes, and he's a fascinating guy. I mean, he's been all over the world. Um, doing research, he's like a modern day Indiana Jones. Uh, but anybody loves history and and kind of maybe rewriting some of uh, what we learned growing up based on his incredible research and uh, decades and decades of studying uh, lost civilizations and the history of civilizations. It's a phenomenal book. It's a really long one, Pat. So uh, whoever the best reader uh, of the boys is, it might be a little bit, but. Uh, Big Graham Hancock fan. Hey, who and, built the pyramids, though? Um, Rick Ross has an answer in a rap song that is very. What did What did Rose say? It was just. It was just them. They built it. Everybody wants to give credit to the aliens and everything else, and there's no modern technology, and they did it. He said everybody's handing out credit everywhere else. Yeah, I I think the common narrative, though, Rosé, also one of my favorite humans, he actually wakes up every morning. He goes outside of his estate uh, barefoot, and he lets, uh, with a, with some Rosé, and he lets God bless your boy. Every, <laughs> and I love Rick Ross, okay? Uh, Fat Boy was the ghost rider behind a lot of our favorite flows. I believe he's the one that said that and many other things. But you, is Graham Hancock under the um, the thought that the aliens came down, did their thing, built those, and, and kind of been a part of the entire history a lot more than we are recognizing today? I No, he doesn't mention that. He oh, just what the fuck? That some of these civilizations that have we've been told were very primitive may have had some technology that was far superior than uh, the credit that we give them uh, at this point. To be able to move some of these large stones, um, that would be difficult for today's technology. Hmm. Okay. What about the there's, aliens? There's some talk about Atlantis as well. You'd be oh, okay. Oh, down Are there we, in the Bahamas. That's right. Uh -huh. Down there in the Bahamas, the Atlantis. That place okay. is... Unbelievable. Hey, let's talk about the aliens. Though. Can we get into this? You got a Saturn shirt on. All right. We're talking about the... Uh, the, the Graham the, Hancock. The, uh, Graham Hancock here. We're talking about a lot of things. And you, you've you obviously seen an unidentified aerial phenomenon, which what it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people think you're potentially an alien. You ever think about that? People say, this guy, not from Earth. You see what he does? He's an alien. Do you, do you ever think about that when you look in the mirror and stub your toe? I, I do. And I, I think that's a big compliment. I appreciate that. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who founded the biggest book club in the globe, and also an alien, and a man who would join me. <coughs> Go ahead, get it in. I'm going to let you get in before I sign off. At a howl at the moon someday. Hell yeah. Reigning MVP. Jumper. Aaron Rodgers. Oh, oh, dude. Oh, 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 oh
watch guitar playing in his little quarantine lockdown. Don't. Did you see that son of a bitch? What is this thing oh, called? Yeah. He, the bar collider? He, tempo? He, he's already got that thing locked in there. Yeah. He's been practicing new songs, and maybe he dropped his guitar on his toe. Oh. Could have. Oh, that's what he did. He probably dropped his guitar on yeah, his toe. Yeah, why wouldn't he tell us, sense. man? What happened? It had to be something embarrassing. It had to have been maybe him climbing up on the mirror to add another name onto the list, yeah. uh -huh. and he slipped and fell, maybe broke his toe. It's possible. Damn. He didn't, it didn't hold him back. He was still moving. Oh, yeah. He was still squatting on his power lift, he said. It's a Russian All right, we got to get to a break, obviously. Uh, I thought we were going to play a song. Maybe next week. Maybe, Maybe next, next week. week. Baby steps. Pretty good. Whoa. Is this thing in tune or what, dude? I don't know. You tell me. Yup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see in four reaction to that whole conversation we just had. Uh, Pat McAfee Show. Aaron Rodgers, Tuesday, November 16th, 2021. Joseph Montana, Italian American out of Western Pennsylvania. Yeah. It, was a, it was a it was a kidnapping attempt of his infant grandchild. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in the house. They came into the house, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then he was sitting on top of the stairs. <laughs> yeah. He was like, put the baby down. And they said no. And he said, ah. And they said, no, I'm taking your granddaughter. He said, ah. And they said, I'm taking it. And he goes, you asked for it. Sketchers up, <laughs> sketchers down. <laughs> yeah. Dark. There's no way. Then he yeah. ran down the stairs, yep. and the baby yeah. caught the baby, <laughs> caught the granddaughter after the beak of the lady that was trying to snatch the baby mm -hmm. passed out. It was like one of those, boom, and they like dropped it. And Joe Montana, he actually slid down the stairs. At yeah. first. You know how like that, how people would surf almost down the stairs? He did that and caught his granddaughter like this, and then he picked up the ball, and he actually put foot on kidnapping uh, suspect. Mm -hmm. Called the police with his Bluetooth and waited there. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's fucking Joe Montana, dude. That's right. You have got to experience so many things, both as a businessman off the field and on the field. Is there a moment when I ask this question, it pops your mind, like, what's the craziest shit you've ever seen in your entire life? Because there was a time there where it felt like you were just getting dropped into insane situations and the world was like watching you yeah. do things. Man vs. Wild, you and that Bear Grylls oh, guy, man. fucking electric. That was maybe the most electric shit I've ever seen. Is there anything that you think of whenever you think, like, what's the most ridiculous thing you've been a part of? Uh, probably some of the most ridiculous shit I've ever been a part of was, uh, you know, I, I, I had got the uh, uh, the restaurant, which I'm in right now. And, uh, you know, when we first got it, I, you know, I would come in here and I would, you know, clean up and go outside in the front, sweep up, you know, make sure everything looked nice and shit. And uh, one morning I got up here and I noticed, you know, like, damn, this is a funky ass smell. <laughs> and I look, you know what I mean, to the side of my front door and it's a big ass pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking about human shit. Yeah, and it's yeah. right on the side of the door. So I'm like, somebody then came and, <laughs> and popped the shit right in front of the door. <laughs> like, oh, this, this shit is crazy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I can't be in here serving food. Motherfucker come walk in and they smell a straight <laughs> ass cheeks when they come in there. Like, oh, I think that's the restaurant I need to eat in. So, man, I get the water hose and I'm hosing it down. And, you know, I see, uh, you know, we got a couple uh you know, uh, dolphins that, that usually walk back up in front of, hey man, did you do this? Like, oh no, so, you know, one of them owned up to it. I said, you know, man, check it out. So you don't do this no more. Look, you come by here, we get you a, you know what I mean? We get you a broom and a, uh, you know, you help you help us, we help you. You feel me? And you know, we put together a little, uh, I put a proposition together for him and ain't cleaning up shit no more. <laughs> it's a win-win, it's a win for everybody on that one. Hey, one of your hey, former you know, teammates. Hey. Yeah, hey, everybody wants you helping the people, man. That's awesome. That's why people love you. But hey, one, one of them owned up to it. <laughs> Just a line of questioning. The line of questioning. His the name was Willie. Up. Willie. Willie owned up to. Matter of fact, he just he just left out. He's saying sweeping up. He's like, hey, what's up? Oh boy, I've been looking for you. You okay. <laughs> yeah, we 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 buzz down together up in the front of the uh, restaurant to get it all cleaned up and everything. Hey, you're helping people. Hey, you're help Willie went from shitting outside to working inside. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Let's go, Willie. Let's go. Give it up for my boy Willie, man. <laughs> Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here. 
Today's show is presented by Arby's. If you missed it last week, the latest and greatest addition to the Arby's menu is the Arby's Boneless Wings. Oh. Arby's is only titling them Boneless Wings because Arby's knows they're nuggets that you just put some buffalo or barbecue sauce on, but it's how everybody else describes it, and I want to let you know, Arby's Boneless Wings, the best boneless. Hell yeah. Delicious. Play no games. These Boneless Wings are amazing. We've had too many at the office, but you have to try them if you haven't yet somehow dabbled with the Arby's these boneless wings, you're doing yourself a massive disservice. We're talking about six pieces of all white meat, chicken, and crispy, seasoned, breading, tossed in either classic buffalo or hot honey sauce. Mm. Serve with their new crinkle cut French fries, which if you order the cheese alongside of them, might be even better than the curly fries. Yeah. Delicious. They're unbelievable. Because what made the curly fries good wasn't, it turns out, the, the shape of them. It was the what they were being cooked in. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Which the crinkle fries are also being cooked in. Uh -huh. So the flavor and the texture with the cheese is unbelievable. All of that, the fries and the boneless wings, the cheese will cost a little bit more. Just $5 right now at wow. Arby's. Get yours today. Pat, also, you, I mean, we know this. Seat Geek has been coming up Whoa. clutch for us yeah. all season long oh. as we get back out there. Yeah. But maybe the best thing they've done is make all football tickets. 15% off to all users. Whoa, wow. This is by far the best promo that they've ever done. No code. Just click the link of the description of this show, and the 15% off code will be auto-applied to your account. It doesn't matter if you've purchased on SeatGeek before. Click the link in the description, and you will automatically get 15% off. Welcome back to the show. We should probably do those earlier in the show so we don't have to race them in before the show ends, but uh, <laughs> that's real professionalism out of us. A lot of things came out of that Aaron Rodgers conversation. AJ, how about you being Walter Cronkite and saying, hey, what are the chances you being on a Packers next year? And he goes, no comment. Then you press him for the no comment. He goes, I wasn't told not to say no comment, no comment. That's going to be a conversation. I actually screamed, oh, shit, immediately after he said it because just a couple weeks ago, it was all good just a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I love playing in Green Bay. What happened, uh -oh. AJ? What do you think happened? Why'd you ask that question, huh? You just out of, no out of nowhere, a little spur of the moment, oh, I'm feeling a little feisty. I'm like curious. Frunkite. What do you mean I'm curious? People ask me, like, oh, what are the chances Aaron's in Green Bay? Like, you think I know? Like, I don't, who knows oh, if he so knows? That was a selfish question. Hey, uh, so I, you I, were, uh, you, no, that was good. Hey, good journalist. Yeah. Good boy, AJ. I'm not, yeah, I'm not a journalist. You are kind of you media are. journalist. No, yeah. Yeah. You, you have to actually, write. Don't you have to write to be a journalist? No. You write no, with journalism. Your words. Video journalist. Yeah. 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 Maybe I'll go to Syracuse. You won't. Well, you already went to Ohio State. What are you, you going to do? <laughs> you go gonna get do? my MBA. You can do internet school at Syracuse. You get an MBA, a master's of business association or whatever. Yeah. What? No but we're talking about journalism. Some of their broadcasting programs. Oh, you'd be, you get an MBA in journalism at Syracuse? Maybe. Yeah, I'll think about it. You're a clown. <laughs> Why don't you go You're for your mocking, doctorate? You are mocking everything that everybody at Syracuse has ever studied. I'm I not. My, my own dad was a radio TV major. Trust me, I'm not wow. mocking that. Well, how about Michael Cole? Did you just spit in Michael Cole's yeah. eye? You said, <laughs> no, hey, Michael Cole. I said Syracuse <laughs> because it's the, like the, the, the greatest institution for broadcasting, it seems like. What about Ohio State? Northwestern wouldn't like that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. What about DePaul? Or I mean, Ohio. Yeah, yeah DePaul. 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 Harvard. Wabash, Wabash, Wabash oh, is so, not gonna yeah. like that. No. Welcome back to the show. Obviously, Paul with Diggs. Is that where you went? No, oh, no that's not Matt. Oh, that's Matt's alma mater. Two different well, people. Just want to let you know, he yeah, went to yeah, Duquesne. Oh, no, Duquesne, yeah, he did go to Duquesne, which is known for being right above the jail and not having enough grass to be an Ivy League school. Right, all right, Diggs. That's it. Academics wise, Ivy League, not enough grass, so you couldn't play frisbee and stuff <laughs> like that. Abcadabra. Don't listen. Tone has a big brain. He does. Right. He, he does. Back out there. What's that? Did I not say academically? No, nah, well, you didn't say it accurately, for sure. But that is, don't worry about it. Don't Appendix. worry about it. I make mistakes all the time. I called Charlotte Cleveland yesterday, and I thought I gave a great soliloquy about how cool this whole Cam Newton thing is. And the only thing anybody's saying is he said Cleveland instead of Charlotte. I'm Why like, would God. you bury Charlotte like that? People forget. CTA. I know. That's kind of what they were all saying. But Cleveland doesn't deserve that either. No, no. kind of. Anyways. They do stink in football. How do you hurt his toe, AJ? You know. I mean, that I told you yesterday, I didn't know. I still don't know. I, does anybody know if he did it in the privacy of his own home during his quarantine? Are we ever going to know? Mm -hmm. We need to find out. Secret safe with him, I guess. Because he wasn't yeah. allowed to have anybody around him. So no, literally Trent. nobody could know what the fuck happened to his toe in his house by himself. Had to have been a stub toe. Had to have been. 
like a really be bad, bad stub. To, yeah, really it. bad. Kick the ground. You're so yeah. pissed. And he and he, by the way, was like, "There's no way I can miss a game because of this. I will get crucified yeah. if I do this." Maybe Guitar Hero. Maybe Axel. Maybe his Guitar Hero. That took out a Tiger pitcher. Exactly. Yeah. Good point. Let's get to a phone call here before we get out of here, get some reaction from the people on the phones. And once again, we know that the phones aren't necessarily the voice of our listeners. These are listeners that want to be a part of the show. Mm -hmm. That's right. Can't wait to hear how it goes with Tanner in Green Bay. Tanner, what's going on? You getting the book, the uh, the uh, the 600-page Finger, book? Fingerprints oh, yeah. of the Gods. Fingerprints of the Gods there? Oh, hell yeah, I am. Yeah. How you yeah. doing, boys? Hey, Keep going, moving. Good, man. Hell yeah. yeah. Hey, I uh, just got a quick question for Age here. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, the boys were talking earlier that the Rams might now stink. But uh, all jokes aside, uh, they're going into their bye week, and then they're going to be coming up to Lambeau for a huge Ooh. game with major playoff implications. Major. Um, it, it, it lines up to be a Milwaukee ticket holder game. I'm wondering if AJ ever noticed the difference between the green and the gold package games. And should I be hoping for a massive white knuckler storm to come blowing through and lower those ticket prices on Geek? All right, Tanner, a lot of questions there, a lot of inside baseball, I think, in yeah. Green Bay, which is a massive market, obviously good for a national show like this one here, international show. But what the hell was he talking about? Yeah, there's like green and gold packages. Yeah, like you said, mm -hmm. Milwaukee ticket holders. I don't know exactly how it works, but yeah, there was. We did know that if it was a green or gold game, but at least – when I was there, we couldn't tell much of a difference. So you didn't get more up for the green games? What happened? People would wear green, and then people would wear gold? No, it's what they call it. Like what if you, hell? If a hey, green that was game one of the worst. Whoever gets the ticket. I, 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 I appreciate on. that, and maybe we could learn about something. But uh, that guy thought AJ knew about this thing. He <laughs> thought AJ knew the meteorology. I would like a little inside baseball there, but AJ has no. Snow clue. would drive no. the prices up though in Green Bay. I feel like everyone yeah. wants to like go to a Lambo game in the snow, especially that game. Hold on though, yeah, that game's huge, especially for a Los Angeles team in the snow. But a lot of traveling in for games, right? So if snow potentially, oh, yeah, true, you know, nice. gets in the they're, way, they're pretty good about. It. They can handle snow pretty well in Green Bay at the airport though. All right, can the pilots? I assume they're just better. I don't know. Let's. Uh, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Uh, there's another show coming on after a six minute break. I promise our show will be worse tomorrow. See you then. Um, what the fuck was that guy talking about? Green and gold packages. So you're, it's like season ticket holders from Milwaukee, but you only get alternating games, maybe. Yeah, like I think Ooh. they make it half the game. Foxy, they never get old. Got. Well, they will. Some people, some, some people's season tickets are. Not yet. They, they get half the games, I guess. Okay, so you get half games. You're green or you're gold, and then you guys get told like, "Hey, it's a green season ticket." No, no, they don't. No, they don't say that. But I, you hear that? Yes, like, oh, sometimes I don't. I guess he's trying to say like, oh, is the Milwaukee? If it's a Milwaukee game, are they louder than when it's not? Oh, so it's a it's a crew from Milwaukee, and then it's outsiders that I just talked about. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Honestly, I don't really know. Yeah. Come on, dude. I know green and gold, and he says the Milwaukee. But, like, people have season tickets all over the world, so I don't know. Because if it's, like, two groups, and maybe they're trying to compete, which fan base is louder? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what he, I think that's what he's getting at. Which, did you ever know which one was better? No, but I, you know, they were always loud to me. I don't know. But it sounded like he was trying to sell the tickets, potentially. Yeah. Or right? Right? decide when to buy them. I don't fully understand. I should have kept it. I hung up on it. That's on me, Chris. We'll ask follow-ups next time. Yeah. Are we done, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Feels like we're done. Feels like we're done. I was up hey, last how, night with the how'd dog. How'd your meeting go yesterday? With uh, the hilarious. It's carried into today. The people that showed up. Yeah. What about the randoms? They're gone. Oh. <laughs> Good to know. We'll be live 11 to, um, 11 to 2, I think, on Friday. Okay. And that's just okay. got decided. Where are you? Uh, Hartford, Connecticut. Oh, oh Hartford. Oh, Vince, right? Ooh. Hey, wait, bro. Come on. Hey, Friday is going to be a legendary day. Friday's, I'm meeting some people on Friday that I, I will probably change my Twitter bio for. Hell yeah. In Hartford? Yeah. Yeah. In Hartford. Oh. The trashers? I think so. I think it's happening. I think, uh, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> How's your family? How's your family? Huh? You gonna bring him your twenty three and me test? Well, he knows. All right, they know. They they don't need to see. They they can tell by the way I operate. But I am bringing all of the pinky rings. I am bringing oh, yeah. all of the necklaces. 
I am doing everything I need to do to let him know hey, he's on friend of ours. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Friend of ours, just so he knows. That one, that 0.01% is going to be glistening on a lot of different parts of my <laughs> body. Yeah. Hopefully that's able to happen, though, because... Don't insult him. Huh? Yeah. Don't insult Don't him. Don't do your normal stuff. Don't make it a mockery. Don't do my normal stuff. Whoa. What are you guys even talking about? You've seen yeah. me at Italian gatherings. Very disrespectful. No. None of the bop of the boop yeah. stuff. Hey, you guys have said I'm a hit at Italian gatherings. You guys know it? Yeah, you don't do that, though. I'm a fucking hit, dude. A lot of clapping. Oh, look at that. Hey, hey, what are we doing? Hey, 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 Right, that's not gonna go about well. halfway through there, you, you went too far. Uh, see, when the shoulders, was it the shoulders? Because the <laughs> hands may be a little bit too much, but I can get a little bit. Right, go. right so I think bad. he'll be disrespected if the first thing you don't you say is, you know, hey, you got any gabagool? Hey, how's the uh, gabagool? How's your family? <laughs> you should. You guys have seen me operate in those situations. I've been in Italian days. Oh, How'd that go? <laughs> well, uh, one of them didn't go great, but are we just talking about one game or an anomaly? <laughs> Come on. You know, are we talking about all this? That was a rough day <laughs> for me and my Italian friends. Not that it, look, by the way, little did they know, they were judging an Italian man. Yeah. That's right. Plus, you <laughs> learn from that. You know. <laughs> Drew the line. Hey, what arena is in Hartford? I, uh, Whaler. Geez, Hartford, geez. Hartford Whalers, dude. Book Club Don. Oh, right. yeah. I have no idea. I mean, this is kind of like whenever, uh, when I was in the league, and I, you're probably much different because you had to actually prepare for stuff. I had no clue who we were playing until maybe Wednesday morning at that meeting when they kind of put up who is going to be returning kicks. I've, I have no idea where we are Friday. I couldn't even guess where we are next week. I know Survivor Series is on Sunday, I guess, we're going to be in Brooklyn, but I have no idea. I just kind of figure that out as the days go by. So I'm a terrible promoter of that shit because I genuinely have no idea. Well, you don't need to promote. I mean, they're already – aren't they all sold out anyway? No. Tickets, oh, really? Tickets are always – uh, well, there was a couple that have been sold out, but I think there's always tickets. Like, they'll add tickets, stay in the room, tickets. They were in Indianapolis last night. Yeah. I, Raw was in Indianapolis last mm -hmm. night. Oh. Survivor At the basketball City. arena? Yeah. At Gainbridge, I think is yeah, what it's called yeah. now. Gainbridge Fieldhouse. That's a good name. Yeah. 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 Sweet. You don't want to go support? Support what? Support the the sport. Support the organization you work for. No. Game, Listen, dude. that's raw, dude. Okay. And we got Survivor Series this weekend. Has it always been like this, where it's like two different roster deals? Yeah. Two different. Always. Two. Not always. No. No. Obviously, there was a pretty big thing that happened and then the business has evolved ever since then and more talent more to air time more business to be had but it operates as two completely different businesses basically and then whenever we would show up like my first time in a couple pay-per-views was my first time seeing anybody from raw mm -hmm. and it did feel as if like okay this is two different business there's people that were friends with each other but it was two very very different things and i think even when they do the house shows like smackdown or we're in europe and raw somewhere else it's two completely in survivor series you know is when they go head to head oh yeah they go head to head to head do they still have those house shows that aren't on tv oh yeah not for smackdown though yeah yeah when like the weekends they run the uh, loop is what's going on. Never think. on Friday, though. Never on Friday. No, Saturday and Sunday, though. They'll go do a show wherever, like, uh, I don't know if it's every week. I don't know if it's back down since the COVID situation where all those house shows stopped. And it was a massive investment, those house shows. And people were getting their asses beat <laughs> in these house shows and everything. And then COVID happened. And the house shows obviously couldn't happen. It was only the Thunderdome shows. So everybody wondered about what the future of the house shows was. They're still doing it. They, they did an entire Europe tour Five, four straight days. They're doing house shows now. I don't know if there's less of them, more of them. But Does it, Michael Cole have to go from Friday and do one, those on Saturday? No, nah, no commentators. No commentators. Why That's, would they have a house show on Friday, AJ? Yeah, we have the, the a big show shows on, on Friday. Friday. Think about it one time. Why would they? I, easily, I did think about it. I was asking. I didn't know if they were all. I assume they were all on Fox. No, this know. is a good question. Hey, he's a journalist. Yeah, and you just go back to school for it, then. No, no, I never, no. I never started school for it. Oh, oh fucking! Sorry. How do you want me to go back if I ain't never been, pal? Oh. That's what AJ just said to you. Makes sense. He's a it's clown. crazy. That business is insane. He's not a clown. Although Dave Sala said Rex Ryan is a clown. That was, that was amazing uh, earlier today. But that wrestling business is insane. It yeah. is. It is wild because you don't know who. You know, the lines get blurred on who hates who. Oh, I bet. Mm -hmm. And I just drop in and drop out, so I'm always like, ah, I don't know. 
I don't know what to shoot, what's a work. I don't know who hates who, how to go about it. I'm just going to go literally no filter, whatever comes through my brain, through my mouth, through the show. And let's just hope not everybody hates me. I assume there are people that don't like me backstage for some of the things that I've said, though, I bet. I mean, ah, fuck them. Ah, fuck it. You you'll be okay. I think so you'll be much right. happens from Friday to Friday, too. It's like, how could you? I don't think I have. You're right. I don't think I have any. He, literally, I walk through there. I am just a bebop. Hey, Gabagoo. Gabagoo. Hey. hey. Good to see you. How's, How's the family? family? As long as you <laughs> don't. That's literally just bouncing That's through. That's way too far. What? Don't. <laughs> what for? What are you talking about? For the Gabagoo. The Gabagoo. I'm just reenacting what this Italian man does every Friday when I arrive at a SmackDown. I kind of just bounce around. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Keep it moving. Here we go. Good to see you. You're crushing it. You're killing it. Oh, I hope everything's okay. And then show starts and I'm out of there. Uh huh. As long as you don't upset the biggest baddest ooze, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah, he and I have a hilarious relationship. He chased me out of the goddamn arena. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's that all about? Tribute to the troops. He's calm down. Well, Shinsuke Nakamura took on Roman Reigns <laughs> and tribute to the troops. <laughs> the fuck am I gonna do? You know what I mean? Like those are literally my guys. Yeah, support the troops. These are my guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Roman threatened me a little bit. He kind of turned posture and asked me what I was doing. And it was during a commercial break. And I I found myself. I guess my body did it. They told me afterwards. I jumped over the barrier on the other side where the fans were. <laughs> I, I, I guess they told me that I actually jumped over. Pretty athletic of me. I don't remember it happening because I was kind of panicking that the big oose obviously was not happy with yeah. me. But then I hopped back over and then boom, turned around again. And then, I don't know, I think Michael Cole maybe picked me up. I was ended up on the other side again. So... You know, things are getting really interesting in my world. Things are colliding, and, you know, it's a whole new era, a new roster, and I don't know much about fuck, but I'm having a blast. I'm having a blast. I'm having a blast, AJ. You would crush it in there, I think, honestly. Absolutely not. I would not. I watch it, and I'm like, man, like I told you, no. I watch it, I am very entertained, and it is not anything I could do. I guess big pop backstage is when I said somebody ordered Viking ass for dinner. Because the Vikings, <laughs> oh, the Vikings, hey, that one got me live. So I guess in the uh, back, it, that was also a big hit. Although I didn't hear, I don't hear anything from anybody, by the way. After the show, I'm out of there. I'm on a plane. Mm -hmm. I'm gone. It's like, I wonder if anybody, hit, oh, I guess I'd hear about it. Roman is so cool. That's a sign cam every yeah. single time. Mm -hmm. Sign cam, I do that. Normally my sign says, Michael Cole stinks. Uh -huh. But this particular time they did sign cam while Roman was in the ring. Uh -huh. So I was like, gotta do, gotta it. do it for Roman. Roman's so cool. Um, Ron Rivera said he has kept plays in secret for if he ever had to play against Cam Newton. Do you oh. believe that or not believe that, AJ Hawk? Huh? Wait, defensively? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's got things in his back pocket. Hey, look at this. I'm going to dive deep into my back pocket, okay. into my book of tricks that I've been watching Cam Newton since he came into the league. And these are the, the coverages, the looks, the schemes that would keep him completely confused and at bay and not become the Superman that he always becomes. I've seen him fail so much. Is what Ron Rivera was thinking. And when I saw him fail, I wrote it down and said, this is his Achilles heel. That is what he alluded to, to Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk. I assume that's an accurate and real thing that would happen if you're around somebody every single day of their development through the NFL. Well, I mean, Ron Rivera absolutely, I'm sure, knows what used to cause Cam issues and what he didn't like to face. So maybe he's going to throw some of that at him. What if, what if, what if Ron Rivera says... Is it in Washington or in Carolina? It's in Carolina. Carolina, yeah. I was about to say, what if Ron was like, uh, let's make a no hat policy? <laughs> All right. Cam can't wear, Cam can't wear any hats. Like, it's in Carolina, though. Ron Rivera knows what the buzzsaw could be if Cam gets going early, just like that Niners team, just like college offenses that are a lot of movement. And if you stay on schedule, if first down gets going, it's a snowball effect for the defense. It's here we go, second down, third down, first down, second down, third down, first down. And that's what the Niners did last night. If Cam gets rolling early, I think Ron Rivera very much understands that he's been on the benefic benefiting side of that. This thing could get out of control quick but how much can cam learn via joe brady going into week two against ron rivera i guess only time will tell i mean we'll see i think but cam has to learn a completely new offense that is was not there last time he was in carolina he's coming off of learning the patriots offense last year yeah what i would i would assume brady's sitting there and saying like all right what plays do you like 
What do you feel most comfortable with? We'll make sure we lead with those and then hopefully not put them in any weird situation. And who decided last week for Cam to learn two plays in their both goal line plays and they used them both? Yeah. Yeah. Is that Joe Brady, nice. Matt Rule? Who's the prognosticator that we need to maybe – Lure into the gambling thing. Mm-hmm. Well, and he has chemistry with at least the wide receivers, so that does benefit him a little. And Christian. I will, I'll I'll go to Joe Brady and go, uh, hey, Joe, listen, you need to retire now. There's a lot of money to be made. If you fucking knew that two plays only need, were needed <laughs> and both of them happened in back-to-back drives and put that game against the Cardinals away, it was, it was, ama- it was a storybook beginning for Cam and Carolina. What will they continue to do? Because you can add packages for wide receivers. You can add packages for running backs. By the way, Lev Bell, no longer a member of the Baltimore Ravens. He had a couple packages, scored some touchdowns. Mm -hmm. He is now leaving the Baltimore Ravens. That's a big deal. But when it's your quarterback, the package is the entire offense. That is interesting what they go with and what they don't go with. You know, what they put in, what they don't put in. What they install what they choose to leave out just because they're getting in too much. And then what happens if you run into something that just beats the only shit you got? That's And what about what do you do in two minutes? Like, are you going to be able to make Cam feel comfortable in your two-minute situation? And PJ's a baller, by the way. I think yeah. a lot of people yeah. are saying. So maybe they'll continue to have the little tandem tag team. And I, I assume Cam and PJ are getting along just fine. And they're both coming off of massive wins. Like, the football teams beat Tampa. Carolina beats uh-huh. the Cardinals. And Sam Darnold sitting at home going, oh, I'm, I'm uh, done. NFL was yeah. fun. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. AJ, I appreciate you, buddy. Hey, appreciate you. It was fun today. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. So maybe it's hashtag Aaron, hashtag PMS Aaron hurt his toe, and then give your explanation. Okay. okay. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah. Hashtag PMS, this is how Aaron hurt his toe. <laughs> Two A's in Aaron. Yep. Let's remember that. Hashtag PMS, this is how Aaron hurt his toe. Okay. And don't say anything about him loving himself too hard because he mentioned that last week. Yep. What are you talking about? You know, he said you gotta love yourself. So I'm, I was—I didn't get the chance to ask him. Like, was awesome. he loving himself over and over again in quarantine, and somehow his toe got jammed? I'll talk about that. Okay. A lot of the internet, I think, is going to say. By the way, you won't win. We'll give away. Um, we'll give away five thousand to the best one in the boys' eyes. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. In the boys' eyes. Okay. It's a tough. Eight, tough. Tough to get everyone to agree. Yeah, it'd probably well, be five thousand dollar winners if I had to guess with how this whole thing. We had no no umbrella to the brainstorm. The boys will figure that out. But five thousand dollars hashtag PMS. This is how Aaron hurt his toe. That's good. This Here is gonna go. be good. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is when the internet becomes fun. You know, <laughs> and and Aaron, you've already I, I've seen it all. You've already taken it in the shins. This one might go to the toe a little bit, but I am excited to hear what the possibility <laughs> could be. Aren't you excited about this, AJ? Yeah, I think it's a good idea by you. I'm, I'm looking forward to the creativity that people have. Yeah, the internet is the best. Can't mm-hmm. wait to hear. Uh, AJ, thank you for your time. Colleen Wolf was incredible in the first yeah. hour. Thank you, Colleen Wolf. Thank you to Aaron, and thank you to everybody that watches. You're the best humans on earth. Um, I didn't sleep much last night, AJ, so I'm a little bit tired today. I don't know if that's great news or bad news for the show and for my future. Good but show. I, What happened? They, my Valerie, my... my my daughter had uh, a cancer tumor removed from her back right thigh. And it seemed like they sewed it back together because she is half Sharpay, half Pitbull. So she does have a little loose skin. Sharpay has loose skin. It's kind of the thing. It seemed like it was sewed back together with somebody that was lacing up sneakers. Okay. The, the, the uh-huh. shoe, it seemed like it was potential shoelaces linking that thing back together. But it was a gnarly scar, like pretty gnarly. And then we were told, like, hey, she can't move. And it's like, how do you, how are we supposed to just not let our dog move? Like, what are you, you just put it in a cage? I guess Valley ain't doing a cage. She will literally bite her way through a cage. She does not do <laughs> cages. So Sam's just been watching her. And then when I'm home, I'm tasked with, like, sitting by her and watching her. For whatever reason, she got a little swellage underneath the thing. A little bit of uh, pus or blood started uh, swelling underneath it. So... Sam called the vet and asked about the vet, like, hey, what can we do? They put a valve, they, 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 I think, I don't know if they sedated or put her out again. I didn't know this was happening. It came out of, 
out of left field. They did a little incision. They put a valve in there to drain it or whatever. So now the valve, though, is just hanging out of her leg. So you, you're just asking for what, any blood or anything from inside of her skin just to dump onto the floor every single where. And, and because she had an incision, there's more painkillers that she has to take. She trips out to these things. So it's like anytime she makes a move, especially at night when she's sleeping, she gets up and she wakes up. So last night was like a negotiation between me and her and Sam for like an hour and a half, two hours for her just to go back to bed. You know, and there was a lot of, ah, and then barking at things that weren't there because she was tripping out, hallucinated. I'm like, hey, I understand these drugs are pretty good right now, okay? But you can't be moving. Hour and a half, two hours, and she fell back asleep. And then now she's supposed to just not move all day. These vets run quite run quite a racket. I, I have no idea how that was the final answer to happen. But I swiffered last night in my house eight times because blood was just dropping everywhere. It was just following her around if she was ever to move and go to the bathroom. I'm like, how is this the answer? I have no idea, but... I uh, didn't sleep a wink last night because yeah. I'm worried. About I mean, good luck tonight with that. Yeah, you know, my wife is an angel, obviously, having to deal with this. But it is. What are these vets doing? Like, what? Are we, what how is that the answer? You Unless know? they can give her something that she just sleeps the majority of the day. Like, what do you do? Yeah, but Val's a powerhouse. Like, she ain't going to sleep. She ain't going to lay down. And what happens? Like, we're very lucky that Sam, you know, runs for the brand and she has the ability to be home. But what happens if Sam w didn't have the ability to be home? What are these people expecting humans they to do? They probably wouldn't have. Unfortunately, they probably wouldn't have the, the surgery to remove the cancer. For most people, they can't afford it. Well, that's why further brand is happening, Ex by the way. For, exactly. Yeah, that's brand what she's doing. That's what Sam's doing. But it's not, it's not just the, the affordability of the surgery. It's also like, how the fuck are people supposed to get their dogs just to not move? And then how do you put a valve in there to leak blood all over? I don't. They're smarter than me. I guess they went to more schools than I did. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do, you know? Swiffer my ass off, dude. I'm pretty yeah. good with it. I was fucking dancing <laughs> with that thing. like, You know what I mean? And then there's this blood, and blood potentially makes my wife almost vomit when she sees it. So this thing, this tube sticking out of her leg, it looks like it's a bone almost. And there's, I'm like, what? How is this the answer? Uh, you know, maybe we need to invest in more veterinary research mm. so maybe update the entire <laughs> you gotta be able to patch that thing up that's what i'm saying yeah. we're not, what are we doing how long is the valve in it's supposed to be for a couple days can you pull the valve out is that a dumb question i can but then there's just a hole sitting there that's what i'm saying that's like a lot of blood gross it's probably it's probably something you don't want to do by yourself <laughs> val almost did it i mean val looking at that oh, yeah. thing like this yeah. is dumb and yeah. i'm dumping my blood over her she almost get it and they go ah ah then you put the cone on and then she barks about the cone mm. Anyways, I might nap today. Yeah, you should. Yeah, yeah. Good idea. Nah, sure. probably won't. We got a big time night tonight. You know why? We got to dive into that sports book to see what we're boosting on Thursday. Hell, Hell, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hey, because we're not doing a risk free same game parlay Thursday night football. No way. We've moved on from that because all that brought was L's. Mm -hmm. But we will boost some bet on Thursday night football. And it will not be my decision what is boosted. It'll be. The Hammer Don Cowboys and A.J. Hawks decision. Yes. But I will dive in there to say, hey, how do we like this? Mm -hmm. How do we like this? Can we potentially do this? Tone Diggs, the original COVID Cowboys, pointing a finger at his Canadian friend. Yep. Gumpy, will you be the one that will take the oath to say, hey, this super boost that has hit in the past and seems to be ice cold, I will go ahead, step into the batter's box, grab my big Canadian lumber, and take a hack at this thing? Absolutely. Let's yeah! go! Yeah. I got my eyes on something already. Oh, uh, you're Ooh. looking at Patriots Falcons. You already got your eye on something. Oh, uh, yeah. You're scanning through the sports book. You said, oh, look, that's sexy something. Caught my eye this morning, my friend. <laughs> All right, AJ, you don't have to do shit. <laughs> I trust Gump. You just got voted out, though. With, I mean, one point of the finger by tone. He said, no, nope, go to Gumpy. He didn't even think about it. No, no, I was just putting the away council has me. spoken. I was thinking it should be mm -hmm. Gumpy and AJ together. All right. Will you guys? Text? No, I don't want to. I would just ruin Gumpy. You know, you don't want to do that. Same. No, you're yeah, you're winning. You're Come making on. winners. Yeah. Come on, you're making winners. I'll send it over. Yeah. Okay. Make sure you send my way. Go. Yeah. Oh, just Gumpy. respond this time. Well, he's got. <laughs> he's got to coach oh. seven teams. Yeah. Never responds. Why? Well, have you seen how many I O ducks he's left on the pond for me? Oh man. That's kind of who this guy Absurd. is. All right. We appreciate you, AJ. You did great today. Every AJ. day. AJ. Yeah. What do you got tonight? Practice. Yeah, we do. Basketball? We, we practice every night, but yeah, tonight I'm coaching practice. Here we go. Oh, you, you don't let, coach every night? So other people what coach? You just mean? let that happen? I don't so, coach all my kids and all their teams, no. Why not? Can't do, it, can't do it just with the 
Logistics. They practice at the same time. So you're yeah. coaching uh, girls basketball right now. You had the Clemson Tigers in the fall. Mm-hmm. And what are the other sports that happen that you're not coaching? You're just dadding? No, bas- they're all playing basketball right now, but I'm only coaching my – fifth grade daughters too do you judge the other practices that other coaches are putting together as i go learn actually my daughter's playing on another team too another uh basketball team and i watch the practice and i watch the lady coaching and i know her and i'm like i got a lot of work to do as a coach this lady's good like I, i go watch and i try to pick up what they're doing what is it the demeanor the way she handles things or the x's and o's all of, like how she has command of the girls she makes them run if they make a mistake like instantly like the discipline Good drills. Like, they just – yeah, they know what they're doing. Is that in the selection of the team or the coaching of the team? What do you mean? Is it the players that can buy in or is it the coaching demanding players to buy in? Oh, it's both. We've, we haven't had any games yet. I'm just saying how they run in practice. I don't know if they're going to win games or not, but she – like, my daughter's definitely getting better with this lady as her coach. I would assume, though, that it's because the team is filled with great – players that buy they're in. willing to work yeah, yeah. they're buy in they're willing to work yeah that's that's definitely part of it. yeah it's travel ball too they travel yeah it's it's travel oh, wow. what is that aau is that the basketball not, world? Yeah, we're not going we don't go far luckily but yeah oh so you guys just dominate in ohio over there oh, yeah. we haven't even played yet we'll see man no i mean yeah it's gonna be we'll see what happens what, how old's the team fifth grade so like 10 do they talk shit at that grade can you talk shit at fifth oh, grade yeah. Yeah, they do in third grade. My third grade son does. I was selling six in this. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I guess the yeah. brain is able to do amazing things in fifth grade. Yeah. How old? Ten. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Decade. Ten-year-old humans. Mm-hmm. I haven't been around a lot of those. I was selling cigs when I was 10 years old. Mm-hmm. That's fucking awesome, dude. I had no <laughs> idea that that's... <laughs> what, my, if I have a child, I'm lucky enough to have a kid... I mean, he's going to be the fucking worst. He's going to be the worst ch- child of all time. I talk to CFO Phil a lot, and I've gotten to see his kids grow, you know, and kind of interact with them. And Lil Phil, by the way, is a fucking problem on the ice. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Lil Phil has an uncle that will provide everything needed to go ahead and make it and dominate in hockey going forward. But watching the interaction that CFO Phil has with his kids and the things he has to do, I just think of how big of a fucking asshole I had to be to Tim and Sally the entire time. (laughs) And that scares me to death about my potential offspring. You know, AJ, were you a bad kid? No, you were a mute. No, I wasn't. I don't. I was not a, a difficult kid. I don't think my parents may claim at times I was, but no, I didn't. I didn't get in trouble. Because <laughs> you, I didn't talk. Mute. Like I didn't talk. I didn't talk back. Like the questions that oh, kids did. feel comfortable asking their coaches just blows my mind these days. I had a lot of questions. I've always been curious, especially why the fuck would I do that as like a ten year old? And, and if my kid does that, it'll be like, hey, I, I can't. But I see why I potentially was almost. Beat Don every single night of my (laughs) life because of the way that whole thing goes. You learn a lot, right, about your parents as you become a parent. You're, like, much more You appreciate your parents more. You Definitely, as I, like, deal with stuff with your own kids, you're like, oh, okay, yeah. Now I get it. Like, you understand you appreciate things your parents did for you. All right. Tim Sal, I appreciate what you went through. It does scare me. Your kid will be fine. Duber's going to be good. His name's not going to be Duber. We, we have moved on. We do have a new name, though. It's potentially pretty cool. That is a leader in the clubhouse if the day ever comes. Okay. And that'll be announced publicly because right now too much scrutiny could potentially be had and Sam might not let me name the... the sure. You know, Fair. That has happened. Like, Doobie, I thought was a good name. Yeah. And then obviously, we found too many negatives for Doobie's life that Sam actually completely turned against it. And Midas, obviously, the name that I was... Wanting to name my child since freshman year of high school when I learned about the Greek gods, this son of a bitch, everything he touched turned to gold. That name was used on a dog that we no longer have, so it's Sam could not name it Midas, obviously. So the names, I would like mm. to keep them potentially in yeah. the barrel so we don't ruin them mm-hmm. before the potential pitch of the name. You know what I mean, AJ? Smart. Have you come up with any girl names? What's that? You heard me. Oh, yeah. No. no. no I probably have no say in that if I had to guess. <laughs> That'd scare the shit out of me too. Yeah, it'd be great. You would. You a girl would be great for you. Well, my daughter Valerie, right now, you know, she's got me wrapped around her paw. You know, like any. I was up for two hours last night at two a.m. till four a.m. You know, because she was howling or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I just think about how badly I will be abused by my daughter if I had a daughter in the spoiling department and probably setting her up for failure for the rest of her life. I thought about that this morning, 3 a.m. while I was laying with Valerie. I'm like, I'm fucked if I have a daughter out here completely. Maybe a son too. 
Maybe the son will do that. I, I think know. most yeah. most guys are probably like that with a daughter, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, cute. First time parents, especially. It's okay to spoil your daughter as long as you're there and present, and they she knows that you care about her and you love her. Then she's going to hopefully make decent decisions when she gets on her own. I love her if she does the right stuff. All right, we're out of here. <laughs> we'll be back. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Hopefully, I'll be able to have a kid someday. That would be awesome. And my wife would be an incredible mother. I mean, that is obviously uh, very yeah. apparent. But me, that is a... You'd be good. There's idiots all over the planet that have kids. Well, I always right. think that, but why do I need to be another one? You know, that's potentially hurting our world as opposed to helping it. I mean, there's massive amounts of internet examples about people that probably shouldn't have procreated. It's like, how does this person have a child? Yeah. This person is teaching somebody. That stinks. I don't want to necessarily be that, but with the wife... Uh... All right, let's show the good show. Good show, bro. I mean, sports lead into fatherhood, lead into me being a terrible dad, leading into me potentially not wanting to have... You know, what if you have John Wayne Gacy as a kid? Oh, yeah. You're not going to have John Wayne. What about hey, Dahmer, dude? Oh, you're what not about gonna, Dahmer? Yeah, you're not raised in Waterloo. Waterloo. He'll be okay. Yeah, yeah I know Waterloo, Ohio. He uh, wasn't Iowa. raised in Waterloo. Well, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, no. He's that most, is a chance that's coming out. Yeah. Yeah, there is. You're like Especially being in the Midwest, man. The Midwest breeds them, so. Yeah, Whoa. what is that all about? I'm from Pittsburgh, which I guess people call like. It's not. To be honest, I thought Steelers were. Black and gold, and then Wiz Khalifa made a song calling him Black and Yellow, and then I didn't know what Pittsburgh was. To be honest, I had no idea where we were, and then Wiz Khalifa released a song called Midwest Cowboy, okay? And I'm like, are we in the Midwest? I I don't know if we're in the Midwest, but you definitely. Ohio, how come all the serial killers seem to be bred around here? What's going on? I don't know what it is. The the change of season, something about it causes... (laughs) Causes... People to kill Nothing to many, do, many people. Sunlight. Well, well sun, sun will disappear for that. four or five months, but Pittsburgh, there's no sun either. Well, I mean, there's nothing to do in the Midwest. Oh. You start killing animals and shit, then you get a taste <laughs> for blood. That might be it. You get a taste for blood. <laughs> like the outliers. Exactly. Yeah. All right. That's the show. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow. What are we going to do tomorrow? Are we having guests tomorrow? Chuck. Chuck? Maybe oh, Frank no, that's Gore. That's segment. That's not guests. Like Chuck. Maybe no. Frank Gore. Maybe. Frank Gore. Hey, they had a oh. stare down. Him and... Um... I watched Ariel Hawani ran the whole thing. Jerome How was it? Stuff. Pretty good? Yeah, Ariel's good at that stuff. Yeah, Ariel was... He was the guy like at the podium, and then, you know, Darren and Frank Gore were sitting on stools, and he would bounce questions back and forth. Is this Showtime fight? Uh, yeah. It's on the Jake Paul undercard, so I think so. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so is Ariel Hawani official Showtime MC? I don't know. Man, is that why the beef started? Because old buddy used to be with Showtime as well, right? Yeah. So that and he said he gave up the sense. gig so Ariel could have it, too. He's Ariel, the only reason he, Ariel has it is because I didn't want it. Ariel does, does well, though, right? I mean, he's not yeah. good at a lot of things, but yeah. that... He's That's good his, at that, that oh, last yeah. one. He did really, really well. I thought so too with the chanting of the crowd mm-hmm. and the mic. I mean, yeah, he knows. He knows the shits. Yeah. You know, he knows. <laughs> he gets in there too. He loves it. Good for him. I'm gonna watch that back. Not nobody's, but be- which it is fade me time. Like nobody's betting against Frank Gore, right? The guy played football with no pads for 20 years at running yeah. back. I Definitely did. thought there was more of a height disparity as well. When we saw the closer. stare down, right? Yeah, I think that was a. That was how much? Day. How different are the heights? It didn't look like as much as I assumed it would. Yeah. Be. He's got a whole. He's got a head on him. Really? I thought it was like nose. Yeah, half a head. Just from that photo we saw. But then Frank Gore, we hear he's been boxing since two thousand nine, and then we turned and he did. I don't know how. And I think uh, Darren Williams, he's been. He has MMA gyms, I think. Yeah. Uh-huh. So he's big in the MMA and everything like that. Frank Gore's been boxing. I don't and know. Frank has a rock head as well. <laughs> rock. Yeah. And a, the most positive way, like his head, trust me, I've had to try to tackle him. Like his head, you're hitting steel. From one rock head to another, yeah. AJ Hawk says, hey, that's a good cranium on that guy. <laughs> exactly. And he, he, good he, luck. He literally never, his pads were smaller than Vinatieri's that he wore for shoulder pads. Never had any leg pads ever. Got fined for the way his uniform was. And his helmet was the oldest school helmet. It's just, see, I don't know. I yeah. thought it was going to be a lot bigger. Oh, yeah, Didn't you think too. it was going to be a little bit different height disparate? Yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, now granted, it does seem like D-Dub there has a little bit of a, a bend in the leg and Frank's maybe squared up all the way at attention. But I'm not betting against Frank Gore in a fight ever. No. Might not even have a button. 
I don't think he does. Just like AJ Hawk. AJ Hawk doesn't have a butt. No. Exactly. Oh no, I do. Yeah. I, th- I think I could definitely be knocked out now. But back in the day, you thought invincible. No brain's ever going to take a nap on, in my head. I just I, well, I never really thought about it. But now I think I could get knocked out for sure. You you had zero fear to throw your face into anything back in the day, like not. Even I mean, no. Like, there's always like, yeah, I don't know. You always think about it. Did you when you hit Frank Gore helmet to helmet? Did you two just start maniacally laughing in each other's faces? <laughs> I'm one of you. I, he, I mean, he may have. I wasn't. All I was thinking was, geez, I, this. It was like the first quarter. I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's after, That's only if I get through the fullback to get to Frank too. So it was fun. So then you go to the sideline. Do you tell anybody like Kevin? Yes, Gr- we talk about it. It's like a, we all. Are you guys hit him yet? Oh, you're like you're looking around. You guys hit Frank yet? Yeah, no, not fun. I'm going to need some help today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need us to rally. Hey, that is hilarious to think. And Frank, that is the biggest compliment of all time. I think he knows that, too. He never ran away from contact, no. ever. He was a between-the-tackles running back that wore no pads and played forever. And the knock on him coming out was he couldn't stay healthy because he had a knee injury Couple. or something like that, and he just didn't even miss a game for like 45 years yeah. or something like that. Third all-time. Man, rushing. he is... He might join the show. That's awesome. I can't wait to talk to him. That's mm-hmm. probably a little bit of life. Yeah. LaShawn yeah. McCoy. LaShawn McCoy's coming on the show? Mm-hmm. When? Tomorrow. Sweet. Here we go. Here oh, we yeah. go. Hey, yeah. we're having a show. Okay. And then Chuck Pavon is coming in, obviously. Hell yeah. All right, let's have a day. Everybody, take care. I'm going to go nap. Uh, if you're a vet and you agree that everything I just explained was absolute ass nine, let me know if there's any other answers to this thing. <laughs> I mean, what are we doing? Oh. I just got to have a Swiffer jet around the house at all times if Val gets up. I don't know how. No. I love you, Val. See you soon. And uh, thank you all so much for watching. Hashtag PMS. This is how Aaron hurt his his toe. toe. Nailed it. I knew it. I knew it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. We'll see. It's number eight trend right now. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Can't wait to read it. I appreciate you all. See you, AJ. Have fun tonight at practice. See you, everybody. We'll see you, Mignogna. Cheers.